Okay na, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our afternoon session of this webinar. We are live via YouTube, and presently there are more than 100, 154 watching us through our YouTube page, and our Facebook page will also be live in a minute. My name is Moises Neil Vicerino from the College of Management and Economics, Visayas State University. I will be moderating this session. So on behalf of our president, BSU president, Dr. Edgardo Itulin, uh, CHED commissioner, Dr. Aldrin Darila, director of CHED Region A, Dr. George Colorado, um, the content development committee, chaired by Dr. Jude Duarte, president of LNU, and all SEC presidents who are present as of the time, uh, faculty members, colleagues, good afternoon and happy Independence Day. Before we proceed with our afternoon session, let us be reminded by the following etiquette so that we'll have a smooth implementation of the webinar. First, uh, check that your device is compatible so that we do not cause interruptions or experience inconvenience while participating in the session. Very importantly, do not navigate on the screen share button so as not to grab the presentation or the screen of our resource person. Be on time so that we can start and end our session on, on time. So we are starting at one and hopefully we end at 4 p.m. No entry approval when the session is ongoing, but we are live in Facebook and YouTube, so you can just go and view uh, on these platforms. Please log out after the end of the session. Also, it's very important, it's a new skill now, that you learn to mute, and mute, off, or turn on your video and audio, so as not to distract our resource person or others who are participating via Zoom. For easier, uh, I mean, if videos are active, so please practice decency. And for those who are participating in Zoom, please uh, rename your profile following this format. Uh, you start with your institution, followed by your college, and then your name. So for my case, VSU, space, CME, and my name. So proper attire, uh, the, this is the guide if for those who are still trying to uh, go through the naming, renaming of their profile. You can hover the mouse in your name and you can click rename and that's where you input the format. So again, the institution, space, college, and then your name. Proper attire is highly encouraged. Avoid distractions so that all participants can focus. And in the open session or open forum later on, uh, speak if you are recognized. If you also don't want to speak in the open forum, you can just chat your questions uh, in FB or in YouTube. So it's okay not to be in the Zoom. We are limited to 100 rooms. But again, as I've said, so we are live in YouTube and Facebook, so you will get to cover it. Our comment for YouTube is activated, so as Facebook comment. And later on for the attendance, please do not click the request edit access, just input the required information. And there are some additional information that we would like to share. We, we term it netiquette, etiquette in the net. So for asking questions in all platforms, so be kind and polite in expressing comments and suggestions in our thread. Trolling is highly discouraged, although currently it's highly paid, but it's discouraged in this platform. So we try to be polite, decent as possible in our comments. Avoid capitalizing on letters in your comments. Double check your questions 
comments and suggestions before posting them. And if the connection of live coverage is unstable, you may transfer to another platform. And it's also recorded. So if you cannot join at a particular time, so you can just view YouTube later on and also Facebook. Make sure to like our page, EV, HAIs, LFMC, content development. Everything is recorded. Okay. So this is our afternoon session. Um, we will be hearing later on from Dr. Jesse Barrot, focusing on course, module, editing, formatting, and packaging. Checking now, we have 260 participants in our uh, YouTube page. Facebook Live is coming later on, and I think we can, we can proceed. So we are done with setting the rules. For our prayer, um, may I request Dr. Geraldo Fernandez Jr. of the uh, College of Arts and Sciences, Visayas State University to lead us in prayer. And after the prayer, Dr. Fernandez will also give us a recap of Dr. Barrett's presentation yesterday. Dr. Fernandez, are you? Let us put ourselves in the presence of God, in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty Father, thank you for being with us today, even in these most trying times. For you have said, when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in their midst. As we continue with the discussions involving the new normal that we will be incorporating with our teaching duties in the next school year, please enlighten us to learn what our resource person would be sharing to us this afternoon and of course in the coming days so that we could be very effective in our duties of educating the youth. In this novel task, we ask you, dear Lord, to enlighten us always and make us ready for whatever are there for in front of us. This we lift up to you through your only begotten Son, with the intercession of the Blessed Mother Mary, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, good afternoon, colleagues in uh, Region 8 SUCs. Yesterday's webinar was hosted by the Eastern Visaya State University under the leadership of Dr. Dominador Aguirre. The topic was student-centered OBE for model design. The source, resource person was Dr. Jesse Barrot. And in that webinar, he imparted to us import, these important points. First is that Dr. Barrot reminded us that instead there are three important learning outcomes, which are one, institutional learning outcomes, second, program learning outcomes, and third, course learning outcomes. Dr. Barrett also said that we should target higher learning skills from highest to lowest, which is creating, which are creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding, and remembering. Also, Dr. Barrett says, stresses that we should put in mind the following nine core graduate qualities. We have academic excellence, leadership and teamwork, ICT mastery, critical thinking, effective communication, intellectual competence, life and career skills, citizenship, and then compassion. In yesterday's webinar, we were also made to participate in two equally important activities. First, we were made to create a table where the first column will fo focused on a CLO or content learning outcome. The second column on the classification, uh, which focused on the classification. And the third column focused on learning target. 
in the second activity, we were made to make an assessment device. And in that, we were asked to ask the question, are the tests valid and reliable? After that, we were advised to make our own table of evaluation. Furthermore, Dr. Barot also stressed that we have to incorporate 21st century learning principles. And these are make use of technology, then focus on learners to process information and design tools to fit globalization's reality. Also, Dr. Barot reminded us that there must be a balance of themes in the following aspects. And these themes are global awareness, financial literacy, environmental literacy, health literacy, and civic literacy. Next, he also said that we have to craft tasks using the four C's or seven C's, which is very important. And that, that is what we are also doing now. What are these? They are collaboration, communication, critical thinking, creativity, character, culture and ethical conduct, computer and, di and digital technology. And lastly, Dr. Barrot said that in the delivering of our teaching, we can also use apps that can improve assessments such as Grammarly. And of course, we should also create multi-componential and technology-enhanced assessment. Thank you very much. And again, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much, Sir Fernandez, for, for the three cup. Colleagues, faculty members, are you ready for this afternoon session? Time, time to stretch out a bit. Siguro na sa tayo exercise ni Nagmay para ma-ready sa second session. Because our session for today is focused on editing, formatting, and packaging. So without much further ado, let's welcome again Dr. Jesse Isbarot, Professor and Dean of the College of Education, Arts and Sciences, National <clears throat> University, to cover module editing, formatting, and packaging. Dr. Barrett. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for that very accurate uh, recap. Um, I was supposed to have a review, pero talaga mukhang mas maganda pa ang review ni sir sa akin, ah, pag-recap ni sir sa akin dun sa... Uh, discussion yesterday. So, uh, yun yung yesterday, uh, we started from a macro perspective. <clears throat> Dun muna tayo nag-start so that we could, uh, we could con contextualize how we will be developing our instructional materials. Kasi yung iba, uh, discuss agad ng uh, instructional materials but they uh, really failed to contextualize it. So, now that we have to contextualize our instruction, now we know that uh, we have to contextualize our uh, IMs uh, from an OBE perspective, 21st century uh, learning perspective, and principles-based uh, perspective. <coughs> we can now go to the uh, detailed part of our uh, the detailed part of our uh, discussion on instructional materials. So uh, basically. Um, my, my talk this afternoon will focus on uh, four talking points. Now, the first one is we will talk about the aspects of uh, course uh, modules or instructional materials. And then I will uh, briefly explain to you the current principles that we have to integrate into the materials that we will be preparing. And then we will zoom into um, instructional materials uh, scope and sequence. No? Yung kung ano yung ilalagay natin sa <clears throat> content ng instructional materials. And then, we will go to the specific parts of the uh, instructional materials or specific uh, lesson. Tapos, uh, if we still have time, I will uh, give you a sample, sample uh, lesson that incorporates all the things that we have uh, discussed uh, this afternoon. <clears throat> okay, so let me, <clears throat> please bear with my cough. Um, let me show to you now my PowerPoint. 
Okay. So as you can see, the title of my presentation this afternoon is uh, on course module uh, packaging. And I have mentioned to you already the talking points and which is related also to our session objectives uh, this afternoon. So first, we have to identify, we have to understand what we mean by an instructional material. Because some people are confused. Um, uh, how is it different from other types of materials like course module, etc., textbook? So uh, we will clarify that one. But basically, the umbrella term is uh, instructional material. No? And it's a tool, teaching and learning tool, uh, that, uh, it, that incorporates all the teaching and learning activities that you will be uh, doing in your classroom or in the case of flexible learning, the, the things that the students would do at home when they do uh, remote learning. Of course, these instructional materials may be arranged in a different way, in a different, uh, in different ways. No, the first one is you could, uh, you could arrange it per week or per unit or pedri uh, naman. It's uh, per major topic, but the usual way of <clears throat> of uh, arranging the materials, yana per unit muna. And then sa kada unit, you have several uh, major topics. The second most common is yung ano naman uh, per topic. So it really depends on the needs of the institution and the needs of the teachers and students on which one will you be using uh, when you arrange your instructional materials. Okay, so let me show you a graph showing the differences and uh, I'll explain to you the differences also. So instructional materials, you have for general or most common types, you have textbook, work text, workbook, and module. Itong textbook, work text, and workbook, this is contextualized na um, may, the, the, the teacher is uh, really taking an active role in the execution of the teaching and learning uh, Activity. So this is the these are the typical uh, <clears throat> IMs that you use inside the classroom during face-to-face -face interaction. Now module is a different thing uh, because module is written typically for uh, remote learning. No, so what what's the what's the impact of this one on the materials that you will be uh, preparing. Kapag ito yung nasa face-to-face, -face, yung mga directions na binibigay nyo dun sa estudyante, makikita nyo may mga ano siya eh, contextualized sa classroom and then merong mga instruction na the teacher will facilitate the activities. Unlike in the module, no? sa module naman, talagang ano to, it's uh, self-directed learning. Napapabayaan natin, kaya yung inyong materials kailangan self-contained, meaning uh, even if there is no participation from the teacher, the students can, uh, can uh, process the information in the instructional materials. No? <laughs> and that's for the... And that's for the module. Now, let's try to distinguish the difference among the three, the textbook, work text, and workbook. Um, textbook, ito yung walang masyadong activities. No? Ito ay uh, marami, marami ang content niya ng information. So, yung mga topics din discuss and expound, and explain. Tapos may mga questions na lang no uh, mga follow up questions na lang sa bandang huli but but there are no ma much activities in the in the uh, textbook parang lumalabas it's a reference reference uh, material how about workbook <clears throat> ang workbook naman there are no discussions here no it's really mainly uh, composed of uh, activities. So activity one, two, three, four. Yon. Para siya mga worksheets lang. No? So that's what we mean by workbook. Now, when you hybridize the textbook and the workbook, <clears throat> now that's what we call work text. Ito yung common. Common sa mga GE uh, subjects, common sa mga uh, textbook ng elementary, 
at saka the textbook ng uh, high school no so uh, bala- balanced yan may mga discussion tapos interspersed with a lot of activity activities so um i'm pretty sure since this is flexible learning you might be working on a module which is more like an a word text so it's it's similar to a word text probably so that's probably what you will be doing in your uh, instructional material so so that that's that when it comes to the principles that they followed it's almost it's almost uh, the same nga uh, ang pinagkaiba nga lang module kailangan self contained itong uh, textbook work text and workbook medyo ano yan may uh, pag facilitate ng uh, teacher and contextualize inside the uh, classroom Okay, so those are the differences among those four. But uh, we, I, I'll, I'll be using instructional material so that it's uh, more flexible. <clears throat> now, uh, when you are asked, because all of you will be probably asked to prepare instructional materials, uh, <coughs> same thing with uh, our university, we will be, uh, the, the, the full-time faculty members will be uh, asked to uh, come up with uh, instructional materials wherein I am the chair of the instructional materials uh, committee. So basically, there are three things that uh, a teacher must have in order for him or her to really write effectively, you know, to, to produce an effective instructional materials. The first one, of course, is your subject matter expertise. You, you should know what you will write because if not, uh, that's a big problem. No? So when you group the teachers, they should be grouped based on their expertise pag nagsulat na ng instructional materials. <clears throat> um, pedagogy, may iba magaling sa content pero hindi masyadong magaling sa execution, sa instructional delivery. And that's very crucial also because it has an impact on the instructional materials design that you will be adopting when you prepare your uh, instructional material. So dapat, there is a science also on how you will be delivering the content. Kasi the subject matter is the content. And then the pedagogy is how you uh, uh, deliver it to facilitate uh, learning. <clears throat> The third one, which is equally important, is of course the writing skill. No? Yung writing skill ng, uh, ng mga uh, faculty na magde-develop ng instructional materials. Um, Siyempre, the writing skill of uh, faculty members, eh, it runs in a continuum. Merong magaling, <clears throat> sobrang skilled no, sa writing. Uh, meron din nabang hindi masyadong uh, skilled sa writing but at an acceptable level naman. Nasa acceptable level. Um, siguro, it really depends na lang on how you will be grouping the faculty uh, faculty members when they prepare the instructional material. So ideally, when you group them, alimbawa, in one subject, there are three faculty members who will write the module for that one. Yung isa, medyo advanced uh, writing para yun ay mag, uh, mag, uh, <clears throat> mag-head or mag-facilitate doon sa isang group. So, these three components are very important. No? Pag may isa dyang nagkulang, medyo magkakaroon ng problema yung ano, instructional, instructional materials. Okay? So, maari sa inyo, yung iba, yung concern is on the writing part. I'm sure galing sobrang taas na ng level of skills niya sa pedagogy at saka sa subject matter. You just have to hone probably your writing skills because it is a fact din naman na not all are really into uh, writing. So may, may mga ganun talaga kanya-kanya kanyang strengths yan. So it really just depends on how you will be grouping your uh, teachers. <clears throat> okay, so, so I just hope that ito kasing ating... Uh, session will be focusing on the 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 design of uh, IMs at saka sa pedagogy of course subject matter alam na alam niyo na yan may counting writing pero dapat mas mahasa pa yung 
how you will be using your language. Yan. So, that's, that's very important. Kasi when you use your language in writing instructional material, it has to be adjusted. Hindi lang yan por kitama ang grammar, yun na. No. You have to uh, match it to the level of your students. Hindi dapat yan sa sobrang taas ang language or sobrang baba ng language. It has to be just right no? at the level of your uh, students. Now, you might be asking, how would we know? Paano namin malalaman na yung aming language, yung the way we use the language, is really, <clears throat> it, it, that it really matches the the level of students. You can use an online tool. I've been using this online tool uh, for so many years already. Yung Flesh Kincaid. No? Flesh Kincaid Analyzer. Uh, Flesh Kincaid <coughs> Analyzer is an online tool. Libre po yan sa internet. Ang gagawin nyo dyan, pag meron kayong nagawa na na text, ikakopy nyo, ipipaste nyo dun sa ipipaste nyo dun sa text box nung uh, Flesh Kincaid and then it will analyze the, the text that you produce and then it will also give you the level. Ang level niya nasa 1 to 12. So if it's college students, kasi ang pegging niyan ay nasa international standard for native speakers, so pag siguro nasa bandang 9 or 10 ang level ng mga language na ginamit nyo doon sa instructional materials, <coughs> um, uh, yun, sakto na yan sa mga estudyante. Uh, but when you write, when you write a, uh, a course, a module for a professional subject, pwedeng mas mataas naman ang level because in professional subjects, you use a lot of technical terms and nag add up yun sa doon sa level no? ng difficulty ng text. So pag mga professional, professional courses, pwede naman siyang umabot hanggang level 12 because that's the highest. Uh, pero siguro, dahil nasa Philippines tayo, as much as possible, nasa bandang level 10, or level 11. Pag mga GE naman, siguro ideal na sa level 9, 8, 9, 10, pwede yan, or up to 11, okay din lang yan. <clears throat> um, Flesh Kincaid, by the way, the spelling of that one is, if you have pen with you, it's F-L-E-S-C-H. F-L-E-S-C-H, that's Flesh. And then Kincaid is K I N. C A I D, K I N C A I D. You just type it in Google search, and then you type Flesh Kincaid Analyzer, and then uh, voila, you will you will uh, you will see that uh, website. No, that's a very very useful uh, free uh, online tool. Okay, now when you prepare the, this is the typical typical. Remember. Uh, um, the things that I'm sharing with you is from different perspective. Now, I've been, of course, I'm a, a textbook author. So from the perspective of the author, I was the editor-in-chief of a big uh, publishing company in the Philippines. So from the publisher's perspective, editor's perspective, I'm also a teacher. So from a teacher's perspective, and I'm also a researcher. So from a researcher's perspective, I'm combining all of these things. No? These different perspectives in sharing with you the strategies in uh, developing your instructional material. So basically, we have 10. <clears throat> we have 10 uh, steps uh, before you can really uh, send out the instructional materials to your, to your uh, students. So the first thing is uh, the planning stage <clears throat> and... Uh, what are the things that you do during the planning stage? Of course, you have to identify identify the authors. No? So, piliin sino ang tamang author na magsusulat nung sa kada uh, subject. Mas maganda, collaborative. <coughs> Pero pwede rin naman, <coughs> pwede, na, pwede rin naman na individual kung kakayanin naman nung, kung kakayanin naman nung, uh, isang teacher ano uh, pero ideally uh, mas maganda uh, in groups ang ano in groups ang pagsusulat ng uh, books kaya lang sana meron din kayong uh, syempre sa editing naman anyway we will discuss it you know 
pag nasa editing stage. So sa planning, identify the authors and then you prepare the scope and sequence. The scope and sequence naman is not really very difficult because uh, if you have a very good syllabus, no, yung uh, topics at saka yung mga assessment activities <clears throat> at saka yung all other parts of your uh, instructional materials, makikita naman na sa syllabus. So you have to have a very good uh, syllabus also which will be the basis for your scope and sequence. Also, kailangan you have to prepare then all other tools that you might need when you prepare your instructional materials. Halimbawa, uh, meron ba kayong subscription sa lahat ng mga possible re references for the for the IMs that you will be developing. Meron ba kayong mga, let's say, online tool like Grammarly, no? which the writers can use uh, if they want to check the possibly plagiarized items in the, in the instructional materials or yung mga grammatical lapses para ma-correct. So, kailangan ready rin yung infrastructure and tools uh, before you will immerse yourself in uh, writing the instructional materials. Tapos, identify then the other possible personnel or staff who will be very, who will take a very important role in the instructional materials development. Not all are very good in use, in layouting the, the materials. So, kailangan <clears throat> may taong in charge or tutulong sa faculty, kung hindi marunong ang faculty, sa pag-delay out ng instructional materials. Uh, Siyempre, kailangan, kailangan meron din kayong <coughs> editor. No, yung magaling na editor, language uh, editor, para siguraduhin na walang masyadong grammatical lapses dun sa, sa IMs na madedevelop. Sino pa ba? So, editor layout um, artist. Oh, you also have to have, but the teachers, the faculty members can do this one din naman. The, the people who will ask for uh, um, yung sa, sa copy, permission to use the materials. Because sometimes when you develop uh, instructional materials, we will use some uh, um, information or text that are already uh, published. Like, you'll get an article from a newspaper and then you will put it in your in your instructional materials, ano yun, um, kailangan you have to ask permission from the, from the uh, publisher. Especially if the instructional materials will be, uh, will be sold. No? If, kung ibebenta, if you will sell the, if you will commercialize the instructional materials, eh, di mas lalo ng kailangan ng uh, permission from the, <clears throat> from the, uh, uh, source of the text that you used in your in your uh, materials. Ano pa ba? Um, sino pa ba? So basically, yun. Yun lang naman ang parang nakikita ko na mga personnel that you might need when you uh, when you before you start the development of your materials. So that's the first. Uh, step. The, f the second step is writing the first draft of your of your uh, IM. So <clears throat> typically, ang strategy dyan ng mga authors, yung iba kasi bibigyan ng topic, tapos uh, ta several kasi yung balan, naka-assign sa kanya ay for, for topics, no? Ang ginagawa ng iba muna dyan ay gumagawa muna sila ng unang topic, yung ng lesson, and then they talk about it as a group para iisa yung tone nung kanilang instructional materials. Um, although pwede naman kayo yung dire-diretsyo na, but it might not be a good uh, approach to developing instructional materials. Mas maganda yung pagkatapos ng isang lesson, mag-meet kayong mga co-authors <clears throat> and then you talk about things no? para ma-ensure yung consistency of the writing of your uh, first draft. So after the writing of the first draft, you will give it now to your editor or reviewers. No? Yung reviewer, 
ang titingnan muna niya, mas maganda hindi pinagsasabay-sabay kasi this is based on my experience no as head of the editorial department. Pag pinagsabay-sabay mo yung content, tapos may language na, tapos mayroon pang proofreading, nawawala sa focus, ang daming nalalampasan. So one at a time. One at a time, yung pag-check. So the first thing, which is the most important part, is yung content po na. So check the content. Tama ba yung mga explanation? Tama ba yung mga uh, mga e example na binigay? Yung mga fact-checking naman, um, yung bang mga year ay tama ang ibinigay. Yung mga percent, no? Ito yung mga facts. Uh, <coughs> Uh, ma malimit to sa mga ano eh, sa social studies, engineering, yung mga heavy on facts, no? Medyo mabigat-bigat ang fact-checking na gagawin dyan. Yung accuracy of the computation halimbawa. So, uh, so that's the first, uh, first uh, level of checking that you have to uh, practice. So, pagkatapos ng uh, content and fact-checking, yung tagal niyan, depende. Uh, siguro two weeks would be okay kung hindi masyadong complicated. Uh, pero kung complicated siya talaga, naku, eh, abu baka abutin ang content and fact-checking ng mga four weeks. No? So, it may range from uh, two to four weeks yung content and uh, fact-checking. So, after that, um, you will go now to revising. So, babalik sa authors. And then the authors will revise the materials. After the revision, the first revision, um, it will be sent to the language and copy editor. Uh, yung ano ang focus ng language and copy editor? Ito yung language style, yung mga brevity of the language that you will that that you used in the instructional materials. Uh, Jantinating na ng grammar. Um, sa copy editing, dyan tinitingnan yung mga spelling, mga typography, at saka yung grammar din. No? So, uh, more or less yung language, it's more of language style. Yung copy editing, it's more of the mechanics and uh, grammar. No? So, kaya ito, pwede mo nang pagsabihin yung language and copy editing. After that editing, balik na naman yan sa the author para i-revise. Kung halimbawa, may mga na-identify na, oops, malabo yung language na ginamit that uh, also um, the explanation vague, o i-revise -re yan uh, i-revise -re yan ng uh, author. Uh, tapos titingnan kung acceptable ba yung mga edits na ginawa ng editor. So, after that, You will go now to, uh, pag okay na yun, it will be forwarded to uh, layout artist. No? Yung sa layout artist naman, wait, I'm, I'm hearing some background, I'm so sorry. Um, how can I? Okay na, sir. Ay, okay na? Sige. Okay, so going back to uh, layouting, no? um, ibabato sa layout artist, tapos yung layout artist naman, um, maglalagay na yan ng, ano, ng mga illustration, kung kailangan ng mga illustration, um, yung mga spacing, yung font style, Uh, so yun, yun, basically yung the formatting part will be done by the layout artist. By the way, dapat yung author, para malinaw din sa layout artist kung ano yung i-illustrate niya, mas maganda yung author nagbibigay na ng sample illustration. <clears throat> no? Tapos yung sample illustration na yun, ire-illustrate naman ng layout artist. Tapos minsan naman, Um, original yung papa layout mo dun sa papa illustrate mo magbigay ka na lang ng specifications ng directions kung paano i drawing at magbigay ka rin ng sample kung paano i drawing halimbawa yung mga diagrams etc no so trabaho yun ng ano ng uh, layout artist now after after nung sa layout artist babalik na naman yan sa editor proofreading na no yung proofreading is um, 
titingnang mabuti kung meron pang mga typographical errors at saka grammatical lapses at saka kung may mali ba dun sa mga drawing. So minsan kasi um, <coughs> pag nagdrawing halimbawa table, minsan nawawala yung isang paa. Ganun. So nagkakaroon ng problema. And para by the way bago ko malimutan no. When you when you choose illustrations and samples dun sa inyong instructional material kailangan hindi iwasan yung stereotyping bawal maglagay ng mga brands then no you try to read the guidelines of deped on yung kung ano yung dapat na mga hindi dapat ilagay doon sa 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 instructional materials but let me give you some number one, dapat walang stereotyping halimbawa yung nagtatrabaho sa bahay palagi na lang nanay no so pwede naman na uh, si tatay Uh, ano pa ba? Halimbawa, pag nagbabasketball, palagi na lang lalaki yung uh, players. E pwede rin namang uh, girls. So, you have to um, you have to ano, you have to uh, avoid stereotyping. Also, do not mention brands, no? Doon sa inyong instructional materials, no? You are not there to promote any brand. Sometimes kasi it's good Although it's good, hindi pa rin kasi nag endorse ka. Remember, what you are writing is an instructional material. Um, lalo na naman kung magbibigay ka ng specific brand tapos pangit yung ano, baka madimanda ka pa. No? So, uh, you'd rather use, kumbaga yung fi uh, fictional na ano na lang, uh, fictional na mga brand names, pwede nyo namang gawin yun para it's, it's uh, safer. <coughs> Okay, so um, after proofreading, um, by the way, you have to choose whether it's colored or not, no? Pero kung gusto niyo mas makatipid, eh di wag ng colored kung di naman siya essential. Mas maganda lang pag ganun. Okay, so after proofreading, babalik na naman niyan dun sa author just to, <coughs> ah, yeah, sa author muna. Tapos pagka okay na sa author, i-lay out uli no or pwede rin naman na from proofreader kasi baka may comment si proofreader doon sa illustration babalik muna yan sa layout artist tapos saka naman ibabato sa author for approval so kung wala nang problema i-approve yeah, yan ng author and then ipiprint na yan and then i-distribute na okay so these are when it comes to printing yung paper, yung kalimitang ginagamit dyan ay newsprint para mura. Meron din naman yung white paper na medyo makapal. Yun, syempre lalong magmamahal yun. No? So, um, sa mga publishers kasi, yung kada page typically would cost you like one peso. So, kung meron or pataas, ngayon siguro mas mataas na, baka 1.5 na. 1 peso and 50 cents per page if you will notice try to check yung ano check niyo yung mga textbooks no ganyan ng uh, kalimitang presyuhan pero yun naman kasi commercialized no at kasama sa top up doon sa cost no sa computation ng cost yung marketing efforts or marketing cost ng publisher so if your instructional materials naman will not really undergo Um, extensive uh, marketing at wala kayong cost doon, eh di mas lalong mumura yung inyong uh, instructional materials. So basically, this is how you will be um, developing your materials. Now, if you have pala, diba, let's say you will be using a device, imbis na printing, wala na kayong printing. Ilalag isi-save nyo na lang yung mga instructional materials nyo dun sa gadget which the students will be using naman for remote learning. No? So, pag, pag e-learning materials, di, wala na yung printing. Uh, yung printing kasi kung yung hard copy, no? kasi flexible learning eh. So, dapat may hard copy ka, may e-learning materials ka din. So, pag e-learning materials, just save it in the gadget and just make it more interactive. That's the difference between the two. Next, what are the elements of instructional materials? So there are three aspects that you have to consider when uh, preparing instructional uh, materials. You have technical, pedagogical, and content. I'm pretty sure 
that um, you're familiar with TPAC, no? Technological Pedagogical Content Knowledge. That's the, from the perspective of the teacher. So, dapat medyo train ang lahat ng faculty sa TPAC, sa technical aspect, pedagogical aspect, and content aspect. And these are the three aspects also that uh, you must consider when you are preparing instructional materials. Let's start with the technical aspects. So as I've said a while back, and meron dyan yung pagli-layout, no? dapat maganda ang layout. Um, for example, there are so many studies na sinasabi na pag meron kang text at hindi nagmatch yung text doon sa illustration, it impedes the comprehension of the students. No? So kaya, kaya kailangan maingat. Maingat na maingat. Dito matetest yung inyong um, visual literacy. No? Uh, the visual literacy of the developer, the developers. So kailangan yung text at saka yung illustration ay match na match. Okay? Um, also, the positioning of the illus is very crucial. Kailangan yung illus kung saan yung text malapit dun ang uh, ang ang uh, illustrations na ginawa so mag magkadikit para hindi malito yung uh, reader now for the format um, example of that one of course yung nabanggit ko kanina it can be colored pwede namang two colored pwede namang three colored nakikita mo may mga books blue lang di ba tsaka black so two colored three colored Pwedeng multiple colored, pwede rin naman black and white. So, you just um, decide kung alin ang appropriate sa inyong mga estudyante at saka yung sa kakayanin ng institution. No? Um, we also talk about sa format yung should it be double space, should it be single space. Ang double space at saka yung mga 1.5 spacing, the lower the instructional level, mas malaki dapat ang spacing nun. So if you will notice yung mga nursery, kinder, prep na mga books, mga halos triple space yata yun, no or double space, kasi hindi pwede sa kanila yung dikit-dikit. So as you move up to the instructional level, yung spacing nyo pwede nang dumikit. So kapag nasa bandang elementary, 1.5 spacing yan. Kapag kawe nasa high school na at saka college, ayan, pwede na yung single space. Uh, sa inyong uh, instructional materials. Pero as much as possible, wag naman yung pagtiningnan mo yung inyong instructional materials ay puro text na lang ang nakikita. Bigyan nyo ng breather. Kumbaga, yun, um, kasi pa, ang space kasi, nakakahinga din ng reader dyan eh. Napansin nyo naman, if you will be reading some, pag pinabasa kayo ng mga contract, sobrang liliit ng font, halos walang space, puro text, nakakapagod, titingnan mo pa lang, hindi mo pa sinisimulan, pagod na pagod ka na. So, so th that's the effect of that one. So, bibigyan nyo ng konting breather din naman ng estudyante, magdagdag kayo ng mga white space doon sa inyong uh, instructional materials para it would facilitate also uh, learning no? uh, from, from the students. And, tapos, it will be more engaging as well. Next is typography. <clears throat> typography, ito yung mga font, font size, at saka font style. <coughs> so sa font size, uh, just like what I've mentioned a while back, the lower the level of the, the grade level of the student, mas malaki yung font. So kapag mga element, pag NKP, 16 yan. Kapag elementary, nasa 14 yan. Kapag high school, nasa 12 ang font size. Pag college, pwede naman dyan ng 11. Pwede rin kayong mag-12 no? ng font size kapag uh, college. For the font style, uh, of course, logic will dictate that you will not use naman those complicated, uh, complicated uh, font styles like... Uh, ang ba yung ano? Corsiva ba yun? Yung parang pangkasal na font style. Um, ang kalimitang ginagawa, ginagamit dyan ay yung um, serif fonts. No? Pag sinabing serif fonts, ito yung parang may tail sa ilalim ng kada letter. Yung may guhit na maliit, like Times New Roman. Yun, may guhit yun sa mga gilid-gilid niya, di ba? So may tail siya, serif font. Kasi ang serif font, 
mas ano siya, mas madali siyang, generally ha, typically, mas madali siyang basahin. But I've read one article, no, one research, that Helvetica, Helvetica is a sun serif, meaning walang tail, no tail at all. No? Katulad ng aerial, wala yan. Katulad ng font ko ngayon, nakita niyo, wala namang mga tail yan, di ba? Um, <clears throat> uh, sun serif yun, so meaning without tail. Um, Helvetica would be a nice, would be a nice uh, um, uh, font style. Itong ginamit ko dito, I just forget. I think this is Helvetica if I'm not mistaken. Eh. So if you will note, kasi medyo maganda ang spacing ng uh, Helvetica. No? So it's it's more uh, pleasing to the eyes. But again, it de depends on your preference. No? Okay. And then next is the audiovisual elements. Um, for the printed materials, of course, you only have you only have the illustrations there, yung mga graphs, yun yung inyong pinaka visual elements. Of course, wala naman yung audio. No? But what if you will be uh, preparing an, an e-learning material, ayan, dyan papasok ang ano, dyan papasok yung mga audio, visual elements, at saka yung mga multimodal elements. No? Yung may mga simulators pa dyan, may mga sound effects, pwedeng makapag-hyperlink. So, idadagdag nyo yung mga ganong elements doon sa e-learning materials. That's the difference between e-learning materials and printed materials. Mas interactive at engaging for some, no? For some, lalo na sa ating digital natives, yung e-learning materials. <clears throat> Tapos, hindi pa masyadong mabigat sa printing. Okay? Pero, it requires a lot of technicalities. Yun talaga lang ang, ang demand ng uh, e-learning materials. Um, for the form, it can be, yun nga, it can be printed, pwede rin naman siyang uh, online. And then, uh, another technical aspect is the writing style. Yung, uh, basta ang principles kasi sa writing, effective writing, is ABC. No? The principle of ABC. What is ABC? A is accuracy, meaning the language that you have to use should be using correct grammar and correct uh uh vocabulary no so that's what we call diction pag sinabi pong diction hindi po yan ano ha, pronunciation akala ng iba pag diction pronunciation yan mali when you say diction it's the right choice of words kaya ang tawag natin sa dictionary dictionary eh. so, ang galing yun sa salitang diction okay so you have to use the correct diction doon sa inyong uh, materials. Tama dapat ang mga word na uh, ginagamit. So, that's A, accuracy. B is brevity. Ang Pilipino, kaya minsan pag nagre-review ako sa mga journals, alam ko pag Filipino ang writers. No? Kasi napakahaba ng sentence. Ang, 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 ang masyadong Academic kasi ang pagsusulat ng Filipinos. But when you write instructional materials, kailangan medyo ano yan, medyo conversational. No? Pag yan ay masyadong academic, naku, baka mabor ang inyong mga uh, studyante. Uh, so, at dapat hindi rin super complicated yung inyong mga sentences. Have to be brief. No? Keep it short and simple. Um, example, Uh, Filipinos would love to use uh, due to the fact. Diba? Napakahaba nun. Samantalang pwede mo naman sabihin because. No? Yung mga ganyan. Isa pa. In order to. Ang hilig ng Pinoy dyan. Samantalang you can use naman the preposition to lang. To. No? Halimbawa, in order to pass, you have to study. Eh, pwede ka naman sabihin to pass, you have to study. So you have to make your you have to make your sentences uh, brief also because it has an impact also on the cost kung ibebenta rin at i-commercialize ang instructional materials. Pag sobrang haba ng mga language dyan, ha, dadami ang page. So, mas costly din. No? Mas costly yung production ng instructional materials. Um, C is... Uh, A is accuracy. B is brevity. C is, 
Nakalimutan ko yata yung si ah. Uh, uh, anyway, let me let me um uh, recall the the last one, no? But I, ah yeah, I remember now. C is clarity. Okay. So when you say clarity, yeah, there may nagsabi rin uh si President Edu Tulin. Thanks President uh Tulin. So C is for clarity. Um kailangan yung last time na binanggit ko at a glance no at a glance you have to make sure that uh naintindihan agad no pero wag niyo namang i-compromise ang clarity for the sake of brevity no sa kagustuhan niyo na paigsiin ang inyong um ang inyong statement na damage naman ng clarity. Hindi rin naman maganda yun. So you have to strike a balance among these three elements. No? Accuracy, brevity, and uh, clarity. Now, let's go to the parts of instructional materials that you will be preparing. The first one is title page. You can also have a cover page. No? <coughs> the cover page is like the book cover. The title page is the next page after that. No? Andun landang din yung ano. Para ding book cover. Uh, so that's the difference uh, between the two. And then you have the table of contents. And um, actually, pag naglagay kayo dun sa ano, sa inyong table of contents ng heading, wag nyo nang ilagay na table of contents. No? Ilagay nyo na lang ay contents because it's just the same. Um, lagay nyo lang contents and then you you list all of the the topics and then the page number and if you want to include the, the duration or the week number that's also okay you also have this is very important which many instructional materials miss no gawa lang ng gawa tas diretso agad sa lesson wala man lang pre-test and post-test um because this will somehow test the effectiveness of your instructional materials and the effectiveness of the teacher um how for example you did you have 10 teachers and then you did the pretest and the post test at ang naging resulta ay maganda lahat no across all 10 uh, 10 uh, teachers you can somehow hypothesize that your instructional materials might be effective kasi cuts across all teachers pero kung halimbawa ang inyong instructional material ay based on pretest post test naging effective lang sa isang teacher um maaring teacher factor yun no so pretest is very very crucial also uh, for the future um revisions of your oops may lumalabas na the chinese character ba yun <coughs> Um, it's very useful for the possible improvement of your instructional materials. No? And then, of course, after that, punta na kayo doon sa, ano? punta na kayo doon sa lesson. No? Kung pwede nyo siyang ma-divide into units, then you, you divide it. No? Parang yun na yung pinaka-module niya. Unit 1 is module 1, unit 2, module 2, unit 3, module 3, unit 4, module 4. And then, don't forget to have a unit assessment no para ma consolidate yung lahat kasi some med, in, several in, in typically sa isang unit multiple lessons or multiple topics so that the students will be able also to integrate the learnings or to, to connect one topic to another that's the relevance of uh, unit assessment after the after the lesson and the unit assessment <coughs> You go now to post-test. And I explained yesterday that you have to follow the principle of equivalent forms. No? Kailangan di masyadong mahi hindi mas mahirap ang post-test sa pre-test. Hindi na naman dapat na mas madali ang post-test sa inyong pre-test. Otherwise, it will give you a wrong impression on the uh, effectiveness or ineffectiveness of your instructional materials. <clears throat> Post test as much as possible. You can do performance based, no? Uh, pre test performance based. Eh. Siyempre, kung performance based ka sa pre test, di ganon ka din dun sa ano sa pro post test. But there are there are subjects na hindi ubra yung performance based. Pwede in a form of um, 
yung exercises, di ba? Yung multiple choice. Yan. So, pwede naman din yun. Okay? So, pag hindi, hindi appropriate yung uh, performance-based um, assessment. Okay. Uh, by the way, yung pre-test, huwag nyo namang ikaw sasali dun sa computation ng grade. No? Because it's unfair to include that in the computation of grade. Yung post-test, pwede. Kung bagay, yan na yun ang pinaka-final exam ng, uh, or culminating activity ng uh, studyante. Kasi summative na yan. Yung pre-test, formative yun. So, huwag nyo isasama. Yung post-test, pwede. Okay? And then, don't forget also, very crucial, yung reference list. So, for the reference list, uh, the most pop, one of the most popular uh, uh, re uh, reference style or documentation style is uh, APA. And we have the APA 7th edition now. Gamitin nyo na po yung APA 7th edition. Ano? Uh, kalimitan nyo na ginagamit, oh, ginagamit sa social sciences and education. IEEE for engineering. Chicago for humanities no same with harvard uh, style nasa humanities so you just choose the appropriate uh, reference style uh, for your respective uh, subject areas okay so these are the these are the components or the parts of your instructional materials um mag zoom na, mag zoom in tayo ng konti um, components of each lesson, kasi kanina, part of the, if you will notice, part of the instructional materials yung lesson. So let's try to go now to the components. I'll be discussing din naman in details. I just want to give an overview. So if you if you will see, yan yung mga typical na uh, components of the lesson. You have the title, you have the learning outcomes, pre-activity, or tawag ng iba dyan, ay <coughs> motivational activity or motivate uh, Motivation activity. Yan. So, iba-iba. May warm-up activity. Iba-iba yung term dyan. So, it depends on you kung anong gagamitin nyo. And then, self-assessment. no? Because self-assessment is a so, so, so powerful form of assessment. No? Na nakakaligtaan ng karamihan ng mga teacher. Palagi na lang uh, skewed sa teacher assessment. No? Nakakaligtaan ng self and uh, peer assessment. And I've mentioned yesterday that we have to uh, use multi-componential assessment. Kasi pag ganun, we will see the, 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 the clear picture of the performance of the students. And it also empowers your students if you will ask them to do self-assessment. Input is the discussion part of your lesson. And then you have the enabling activities and then main task, reinforcement task. So yeah, pang ng task. I think I've mentioned this yesterday but I will go into details later with some examples. And then of course the rubrics and then the reflection is very important also. Actually, that's also a form of self-assessment. Okay. Um, next, uh, let me this is on the, the, the kasi yung una it's the the technical aspect no remember we have three aspect technical pedagogical con yung content kayo na bahala syempre doon kasi per subject area yan ito um sa pedagogical pedagogical uh, aspect kasama diyan yung principles no in uh, teaching and learning and then the instructional materials design model that you will be using for your instructional materials. Um, I was able to generate these uh, principles after reading 1,000 journal articles. No, I've read 1,000 journal because I'm curious. What are the? This is this is from. Uh, these articles are from the 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 top. Uh, journals in uh, teaching and uh, learning and um, I was able to to write an article about this and I would like to share these principles to you so that you can integrate them into your instructional materials development. The first one is what do you think is this? <clears throat> no, You can type in your answer. Huh? I say I, I'm seeing naman din some some uh, responses pag nag-type. 
What do you think is that one? Very good. Okay. Sino ba to? Sir Marvin, sabisahe. Constructivism. Excellent. Excellent. Galing. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure that yun, daming sumagot, no? Um, constructivism. Um, of course, alam nyo naman that constructivism is uh, meaning-making. Diba? Meaning-making yan. Pabayaan yung mga estudyante talagang gumawa ng maraming mga output. No? Hindi, na, hindi tayo makakapag-adhere sa constructivism kung palagi na lamang si teacher ang nagsasalita. Which I've noticed, ha? I've served a lot of classes, talagang hindi pa rin maiwasan ng mga teacher na um, bugbugin ng lecture ang mga estudyante. Yung tuloy, yung mga estudyante, nakikita natin ang, ang effect ngayon, kapag sila'y nag-remote learning, feeling nila, hindi sila tinuturuan kasi na spoon feed. No? And we are violating the principle of constructivism there. So pag po, kung sakaling bumalik na tayo sa face-to-face, -face, para ma-sustain yung ganitong practice, you have to to uh, allow students to do more activities and the teachers will really just facilitate, no? Yun talaga ang kailangang maging role ng teacher. Huwag kayong mag-spoon feed. Kasi at the end of the day, it's very hard for you. Kasi very taxing. Di ba? Nakakapagod. At the same time, nasa spoon feed ang bata. Hindi talaga masyadong ano, natututo. Okay? So, so mas i-implement pa natin yung prinsipyo ng constructivism but more active learning from the end of the students. Let's go to the second principle. Ano po ito? <coughs> what do you think is this one? Wow, galeng. Naku. Sila ano na naman, no? Yung kanina. Tama. So this one is transformative learning. Excellent answers. Um, Uh, or TL, kilala nyo naman si Mezero, di ba? Si Mezero, ang pauso nitong ano, uh, transformative learning. And essentially, itong transformative learning is uh, for adult learning talaga yan ginawa. Uh, it's swak na swak sa ating college students kasi mga adult naman yan. Di ba? So, uh, what do we mean by transformative learning? Kailangan lang, ang one, there are two things that you have to observe. No? Number one is you have to surface the misconceptions of your students Do doon sa topic na i-discuss ninyo, na ipaprocess ninyo. So, kaya bago kayo magsimula sa isang lesson, kailangan meron munang misconception analysis. No? Yan ay mangyayari doon sa self-assessment part. If you, would, if you can still remember yung mga parts na sinabi ko, self-assessment, doon lalabas yung misconception analysis. Ano-ano ang maling conception na intindi ng mga estudyante sa isang concept. O halimbawa nga, binigay ko kanina, pag sinabing diction, akala ng iba, that's pronunciation, but it's not. No? Na ang diction pala is right choice of words. So, kailangan na sa surface yun bago magsimula yung isang uh, lesson. So, yun ang isang principle of transformative learning. Kailangan you surface the misconception and you transform them you correct no you help help the students to transform these uh, misconceptions another thing regarding uh, tl is you allow your students to uh, participate in social activities no? so kailangan may social relevance ang ginagawa nila but when when we say social relevance it doesn't mean na community lang So, when we say social relevance, pwede community, pwede yung profession nila, pwede yung family. So, malawak ang konsepto ng uh, social uh, participation at saka yung self-transformation. Uh, no? So, we have to, we have to um, empower the students to be uh, an instrument of social change. Yan ang pinupush ng transformative learning. No? Um, kasi kaya nagkakaroon minsan ng uh, mga estudyante or even teachers, no? intellectual monsters. What do you mean by intellectual monsters? Napakatalino nga pero napakasama naman ng ugali. Wala namang hindi man tumutulong sa kapwa, hindi tumutulong sa society. 
uh, at yung yun ang gustong itama ng transformative learning no so sisimulan natin ito sa uh, sisimulan dapat natin ito sa classroom if i may share with you um, i i did some innovations in our college college of education no yung practicum ng estudyante yung sa education binahati ko talaga kasi kami tri trimestral kami um yung unang term ay sa private school yung pangalawang term so one year ang ano one year ang praktikum sa pangalawang term ay public sa public school at ang pangatlong term ay sa community why because we want our students to to have this sense of community no so so hindi lang pwedeng sinasabi namin sa kanila hindi pwedeng magaling lang kayong magturo kailangan na iintindihan niyo yung sitwasyon ng mga nasa laylayan ng ano laylayan ng lipunan no? so that's why we we did that uh the third uh practicum sa ano sa community and actually we we'll learned this from one of the top universities in the world when i visited nanyang technological university ito yung nabanggit ko kahapon na they are using service learning no so essentially that's what we have adopted also and that's in realizing in realizing the concept of transformative learning principle 3 puyan <laughs> Wow, ang galing. Kaya lang, walang name. Ayun, dami. Very good. The answer is differentiation. Correct. Pero alam niyo po, alam natin yung differentiation, but it's very difficult to apply. Talaga. Sobra, sobra. It's one of the most difficult uh, pedagogical concepts that uh, uh, you, you would be applying inside the classroom. Kasi, of course, when you say differentiation, you take into account the individual differences, di ba? Individual differences ng inyong mga learners. Uh, di ba, meron pang multiple intelligences. Meron pang magkakaiba sila ng uh, level no? when it comes to intelligence. May iba-iba pa sila ng interest. So, uh, ito yung pinakamahirap na gawin. Isa sa pinakamahirap na i-implement na pedagogical concept. But one approach that you can use is, I am always telling this to the teachers, no? Pag nagkakandak ako ng teacher training seminars at saka sa book writing. One way to address this is to provide as many, as many exercises and tasks as possible in your instructional materials. Tapos, yung nabanggit ko nung una, tuhugin nyo yung limang themes, no? Limang themes ng 21st century uh, learning because doon, nabavary nyo yung topic. Hindi lang kayo, palagi na lang nakafocus sa isang topic uh, na makakasira sa interest ng mga studyante. So, provide as many topics as possible and provide as many Uh, tasks or as many activities as possible to your uh, students. Tapos, yung inyong tasks din and acti yung activities kailangan gradated. Merong madali. Siyempre, magsisimula mo na kayo sa madali. Tapos, pahirap ng pahirap. So, with increasing uh, difficulty level. So, that's the science behind behind arranging and choosing activities in your classroom, uh, in your uh, instructional materials. And that's probably some of the strategies that you can use to address uh, differentiation. Okay, next is... Dali ito. <coughs> Yeah, very good. Siya po ay contextualization. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng contextualization? When we say contextualization, um, we provide students with authentic learning experience. Le authentic learning experience. Pag sinabing authentic, di ba, I have mentioned yesterday, it can be in two ways. Authentic task 
and authentic text. Okay? So you have to combine these two para you can give authentic learning experience to your uh, students. Um, tapos dito rin papasok yung grasp, di ba? If you'll be able to identify yung grasp, G-R-A-S-P-S, every time you construct uh, tasks for your lesson, then most probably you will be addressing uh, contextualization. Dapat lang may purpose. No? Dapat may purpose. At tapos may setting. Kumbaga, saan, ano ba yan? Saan setting niya nakalagay yung inyong ginagawang mga activities. Okay, so we have to context so that they would see the relevance of the uh, activities. Next. SP. Very good. Galing talaga nito sa mga bato. Maraming tama. Tsaka yung PC, PIT, CGS, no? Bilis. So this one is uh, spiral progression. Okay, spiral progression. What is spiral progression? Ang spiral progression po ay yung with increasing level of difficulty and sophistication. So patapahirap ng pahirap yung mga inyong uh, ginagawang activities at saka yung mga topic. Tapos magre-revisit ka, no? babalik, parang spring. Pag ni spring kasi it stretch unti-unti, mas gumagaling na si stretch yung uh, na si stretch yung bata, no? So pataas ng pataas ang difficulty level, tapos babalik ka konti, irerevisit mo, pero pag revisit mo dapat mas higher level, mas difficult. Okay? Let me just clarify to you the difference between me um magkaiba kasi yung difficulty at saka technically ah, magkaiba yung difficulty at saka complexity. Pag sinabing difficulty, yan ay relative sa nararamdaman ng bata. Yun ang difficulty ng isang task. Halimbawa, task difficulty. Yung complexity, eh, yun yung inherent characteristic ng task. Halimbawa, I ask someone to write an argumentative essay. Yung difficulty nun, pwedeng mag-vary. Pag magaling magsulat yung bata, hindi masyado mahirap. Yung difficult, hindi masyado difficult. Pag hindi masyado magaling magsulat ng bata, eh di napakataas ng difficulty level. Kaya relative yun sa learner. Pero yung argumentative essay, writing of argumentative essay, complex siya na task. Hindi yun nagbabago. Complex. Why? Eh kasi argumentation yun eh. Diba? Argumentation. Tapos binigyan nyo pa sila ng time limit. Yung mga, para din mag-grade nyo yung mga activities nyo when it comes to complexity na may impact din sa difficulty. Uh, mag-grade nyo yung complexity ng inyong task. Ito po yung mga considerations. no um, <clears throat> One, time limit. Pag binigyan nyo ng time limit yung inyong activity, mas mahirap yun. Okay? So medyo ihuhuli nyo yun kasi mahirap siya. Diba? Pangalawa, kapag ang ginagawa ng activity ay may decision making, that's, that's complex. No? At most probably, mas mahirap yun kumpara sa nagnanarate ka lang at nagde-describe. Okay? So pag may decision making, that's, ano, that's a complex uh, activity. Third, pag nag-groupings, that's more complex than an individual activity. Okay? Eh kasi, ang dami pang logistics na aayusin doon. And then, ano pa ba? Um, fourth is, uh, yun. Ang fourth is, halimbawa, if you provide parang um, audiovisual support. So, if you provide audiovisual uh, su support doon sa inyong activity, halimbawa, pinasulat nyo siya, tapos may picture, o mas less complex yon kung pasusulatin nyo siya without any audiovisual uh, support. So, these are just some of the, the factors that uh, can influence the complexity and the difficulty of the activities that you will be giving to your students. Next. Medyo madali ito. Very good. 
si Ma'am Bate, kanan, si Ma'am Kananlua, si Sir Byron, Sir Dennis. Yun. So sabi nila, collaboration. E tama naman talaga, di ba? Last time I mentioned to you, you cannot naman exist in this world alone. Siyempre dapat, eh, you promote collaboration among uh, among your uh, students. No? Hindi pwedeng, kaya yung mga activities na ilalagay nyo dun sa inyong uh, instructional materials, you have to to balance them. No? So halimbawa, ito lang, ano lang, rough figure lang no let's say you have nine activities in your in in one lesson tatlo doon pwede individual tatlo pair work and then tatlo group work okay so you vary also kasi it also addresses meron kasing mga learners na ano eh um uh, uh, ang tawag doon yung may pagka loner Uh, extrovert at saka introvert. Yun, may mga ganun kasi. So, may mga introvert, may mga extrovert. So, yung mga introvert, mas parang gusto nila yung ano, individual activity. Yung mga extrovert, yung mga group work. So, ma-address din niya. If you will balance it, ma-address din niya yung differences ng learning style ng inyong mga estudyante. No? And, of course, collaboration may happen between and among learners Uh, teachers and community. No? So, ganun kalawak ang concept ng collaboration. Next. Ay, ay. Ayan si Sir Harvey. Sino pa? Ma'am Elvin. Bate. Sir Dennis Ole, si Ma'am Flora Bell, correct, no? So the the answer here is ICT integration. Of course, ang nabanggit na natin, napag-usapan na natin ng medyo mahaba yung ICT integration na yan, no? So yesterday I discussed to you yung ICT as a tool, I ICT um uh, Uh, as a tool for teaching, ICT as a tool for uh, learning, and ICT as a tool itself, meaning matuto siya sa paggamit ng ICT. No? And it also relates to uh, 21st century literacies that I have uh, discussed to you uh, yesterday also. No? Talagang we cannot do away with technology. Talagang dyan na po tayo papunta Actually nga, nabanggit ko rin yesterday, currently nasa Education 4.0 tayo, sentrong-sentro nun ang technology. No? Kaya nga may bagong nag emerge na concept. I, I, I wrote one research article, Critiquing the Curriculum, the Basic Education Curriculum in the Philippines. No? From that perspective, yung Education 5.0 or Curriculum 5.0. Yan, may technology pa rin pero babalik sa humanity ang sentro, no? No, kasi ngayon education 4.0 medyo focus sa technology eh. So kaya talagang you will really be obsolete pag hindi po tayo gumamit ng ano, ng uh, technology. And you have to anong impact niya sa uh, instructional materials? You have to significantly No? significantly integrate technology into your uh, instructional materials. When I show to you an exam a sample lesson, makikita, papakita ko po sa inyo how, how I was able to integrate uh, technology doon sa instructional materials. Next. Sir Wenceslao, Sir Marvin, Tama, sino pa po? Ma'am Flora Bell, again. Ma'am Lucille, correct. No? Sir Paul Matthew, the answer is process orientation. Very good. No? So what do we mean by process orientation? 
Pero sa Philippines kasi product ano pa rin eh, product oriented pa rin. So when we say product uh, oriented kasi, ito yung classic example na uh, mapapagawin natin ng let's say report ang studyante, bibigyan lang natin ng instruction. Okay, write a five-page report on blah, 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 blah using this format and then submit it to me after one week or at the end of the semester or term. Tapos yun na. Product yun. Product-oriented yun. Kasi, remember, ang, ang matinding learning ay nangyayari sa process. Yun po yun. That's why yung process orientation is very, very important. No? Imbis na pasulatin ko lang siya ng ganong style, eh why not? Okay. So we will allot four sessions or three sessions for the writing of your report. Ito, first stage, second stage, revision, fourth, out, outlining, revision, blah, 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 editing. Yun. So you're focusing on you're focusing on the process itself. At dun mas matindi. No? There are so thousands of studies already on this one. No? That yung, yung process orientation really furthers no it furthers the learning and the assimilation of a concept of the of the student so kumbaga dapat kailangan graduate na tayo dun sa bigay lang tapos next week submit ganun hindi yun hindi magandang effect nun sa learning there has to be a process to follow and one important thing here is that in your in your uh, learning outcomes, you try to focus also on learning strategies. Kailangan pinofocus nyo din yun as one of your learning outcomes. Because um, kung puro output lang yung inyong, puro output lang ang inyong product, ang inyong target, eh, mahirap din naman. So you have to focus also on the learning strategies or study strategies of your students so that you can you can uh, somehow um, apply the concept of uh, process orientation next <coughs> yan mom sherry correct mom felisa Sir Harris, Sir Harvey, Ma'am Gina. Yan. Your answers are correct, Ma'am Francis Ann. So, uh, the answer here is uh, reflection. Okay, Mulan. Diba yung si reflection na kanta ni Mulan. Um, ito yung konsepto nito is reflective learning po ha. Uh, ang, ang reflective learning, actually hindi naman siya bago, pero mas lumitaw siya nung uh, 2004, no, dun talaga siya nabigyan ng emphasis. At this is very important po, ha, yung reflection. Actually, ginagamit na tong yung KWL. Yung what you know, what you want to know, and what you've learned. No? So that's actually a form of reflection. Ano bang natutunan ko dito sa, sa lesson na ito? No, after na i-execute yung uh, lesson. So, you allow the students, because this is a form of assessment as learning. No, if you will remember, assessment as uh, as learning. Uh, metacognition, ang tinatawag nito, na, ang, 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 ang tinatamaan nito. So, it, it further empowers, same with self-assessment, it empowers the learners to take control of their own learning uh, processes and learning progress. So, wag po natin kakalimutan to ask our students to reflect on their uh, learnings. Next. Okay, very good. Ang tami. Ang tama. I'm Jennifer. Sir Ryan. Mom Victoria Naboya. Yeah. So the answer here is holistic assessment. I think I discussed naman this one, ah, no? uh, Sir Byron. Holistic assessment. I think I discussed this last time and I presented to you the different um, assessment schemes. But again, employ nyo yung iba-iba variety of uh, assessment strategies para makuha nyo yung buong picture ng performance ng studyante and then you 
observe the five principles of of uh, effective assessment, practicality, consequence, authenticity, reliability, and validity. Next. I see. Medyo tahimik ka. Walang pumapasok. Ayun, si Sir Byron. Galing. Sir Marvin, tama. Sir Harvey, si Sir Dennis. Yan. Sir Paul, Matthew. Okay. Mount Florabelle. Mount Gina. So the answer here is intercultural competence. I think I discussed this also last time, no? Yung intercultural competence is um, as much as possible when you uh, make your instructional materials, you allow the students to, ano ha, may mga exercise kayo na maganda nga dito papasok yung mga partnership nyo po sa mga international, mga foreign universities, no? Na they allow their students to interact. That's that's a very nice, very nice strategy in building intercultural competence. Yung mga English center, no, lang English language centers ng mga universities, they have this one. No, yung mga partner universities nila abroad, they they allow their students to interact with uh, one another and understand the culture of another group of of people and you naman you are you are uh, showing the Filipino identity to them also during the interaction no? so that's that's what we mean by intercultural competence pero kasi ang gagaling mag-English tapos pag pumunta na at nakausap na ng ng ano ng mga foreigners dahil hindi na intindihan ng culture nila ayun nagkaroon ng ano misunderstanding and remember we are in a global society now and uh, we also have we, we should also know how to interact with people from other culture whether it's face to face or it's uh, an online interaction uh, whichever both are effective uh, ways of uh, uh, improving the inter intercultural competence of your students <coughs> next very easy Ah, may sumasagot din pala sa YouTube. Thanks, Sir Moises. Hindi ko lang nakikita sa YouTube. Eh. Ito po, what do you think? Ayun, may sagot na si Ma'am Jackie. Correct. Ayun. Yeah, correct, correct. So the answer here is... Multi-literacies. Ito related sa ano to, ha? Multi-literacies. Sa uh, 21st century literacy. But I want to emphasize yung ano. Um, I want to emphasize information literacy. No? Kasi nga, last time I mentioned to you na yung mga students and even adults, even, even teachers, no? They don't know how to identify which ones are fake news and which ones are correct when they when you write your instructional materials development you should be able to distinguish which are the reliable sources from not so reliable sources uh, very crucial po yun sa pag ano nyo, ha, sa pag paggawa niyo ng instructional materials kasi Remember yung prinsipyo na kung anong pumasok siyang lalabas. Kung pangit ang mga references na ginamit, pangit. Ang hindi rin ganun kaganda yung quality ng magiging uh, output. So, let me give you some strategies in identifying whether this one is reliable or not. Number one, if you will use references from Google Scholar, di ba may Google search, eh, may, may counterpart dyan sa mga articles, research articles, yung Google Scholar. No? Pag ginamit nyo yung Google Scholar, more or less reliable yan. Kasi ang nalalagay lang sa Google Scholar yung mga talagang mga academic. No? Academic and uh, documents and uh, 
research at saka yung mga reputable reputable book reputable books um another one is yung kung online ang ginagamit ninyo kung yung mga book sa library wala namang problema pag online ang ginagamit nyo, if the source is yung link niya nag-e-end sa dot edu mean, meaning educational institution more or less that's ano that's reliable if it ends in dot mil military institutions most probably that's uh, reputable um in many cases yung mga documents na nag-e-end sa PDF ay reliable pero syempre may mga ilang pumapasok din na hindi masyadong ano, reliable. Yung mga links na nag-e-end sa .gov, .gov, ay reliable, reliable yan eh. kasi mga government institutions yun. Baba so .mil, .gov, that uh, yung mga .org na mga reputable organizations like United Nations, UNESCO, World Health Organizations, yan, reputable yan. And yung other .coms na may, may reputable companies na counterpart. Halimbawa, CNN.com. <coughs> so CNN is reputable. Although it's .com, eh, CNN naman is reputable, di ba? So those are some ways on how you can identify whether your your reference your references are uh, reputable or not. Siyempre, you also look at the author. If he's a known author or known personality in that particular field, o oh, yun, uh, de re definitely reputable yung source na gagamitin nyo. So be very, very careful. <clears throat> yung, yung Wikipedia is a good uh, starting point. No? But please do not use. No? Yung iba talagang gamit pa rin ang gamit as one of the references ang Wikipedia. Academically speaking, hindi po uubra yun. No? Hindi uubra yung uh, Wikipedia. But you can only, but you can use Wikipedia as a starting point of inform, source of information. Kasi di ba sa ilalim naman nun, may mga um, references o di bisitahin nyo direkta yung uh, mga references na yon yung sinait doon sa Wikipedia why bakit bakit hindi iniiwasan natin ang paggamit ng uh, Wikipedia because it's editable kahit sino pwedeng mag-edit ng Wikipedia at pag na-chempohan mo yung maling uh, version ng information eh patay tayo diyan no so kaya dapat talaga we have to be very very careful with the references that you use. So, information literacy is one of the uh, multiple literacies. No? Another one is visual literacy. Yung iba, uh, halimbawa na nga lang sa PowerPoint. Eh. Pag gumawa sila, pag estudyante, pinagawa mo ng PowerPoint, o kaya kahit yung teacher, gumawa ng PowerPoint, abay yung text, hindi nagmamatch dun sa visuals no? na ginamit. Eh, may problema siya sa ano, visual literacy. Okay? So, remember, at this point in time, in today's society, ang daming visual information. So, we really have to develop our, our literacy when it comes to using and interpreting uh, visual elements. <clears throat> okay. I think I discussed na this one yesterday. Itong 21st century uh, skills. Okay. See, so this is still... Ano, uh, 21st century skills. Okay. Of course, the third one, the, the last one, I think this is the last one. <coughs> ano po yan? Ayan. Si Ma'am Elvin Bate. So Marvin. Yes. Ma'am Ann. Ma'am Jackie. So the answer here is Outcomes-based pedagogy. And we talked about this yesterday, no? Very extensively, outcomes-based pedagogy. No? Um, by the way, ang outcomes-based, hindi na yung bago, ha? Sino sa inyo ang makakahula? Kailan po nagsimula ang outcomes, the concept of outcomes-based education? Sige nga po, trivia. Oops, may sagot na isa. <coughs> Kailan po kaya nung nagsimula ba si Spady nung 1994? Nung 1980s ba? Sumagot na 1980s. 
wala na. Wala na ba iba sagot? Okay. So nagsimula yung outcomes based, but it's not exactly the name, no? but the concept of it, in 1950s pa po sa Malaysia. Doon po nagsimula yung the concept of outcomes based, but it was popularized by um, Spady noong uh, 1994. And currently, outcomes based pedagogy is extensively used in Hong Kong. Yung mga top universities doon, naku, uh, yan ang ginagamit, no? Outcomes based. Although sa mga ibang like top universities din sa US at saka sa Australia, medyo na abandonan nila yung outcomes based pedagogy, but I think naman outcomes based pedagogy is a reasonable, no? It's a reasonable uh, pedagogical concept. Ito nga po yung, what I've mentioned last time, the core of this one is the learning outcomes no, po, that, that match the demands of the industry. Okay? So, um, so let's just keep this activity. Okay lang po ba? Let's just keep this activity or you want to do this one? I will be asking you to come up with an instructional materials design. Uh, siguro, if we have time, no, I can ask you to do this one. But let me proceed first to the next uh, phase. Baka kasi maubusan tayo ng oras. <coughs> okay. So, but let me show you a sample. Ito po yung ano, ha? this is a sample instructional materials design model. Kailang alam ko, mazizoom in na, mazizoom in ko. Um, this, is a pro this is a product of my dissertation because my field is English language teaching. Um, ito yung binabangkit ko sa inyo kaninang I've read 1,000 articles and I was able to develop, generate those principles and uh, and then, ano yung may nagtanong? Is it the same? That was published, yes. Uh, because this... Uh, this framework was published in a leading education uh, journal. It's an ISI uh, journal. And actually, this framework is the framework that I use in all of my textbooks. Kaya yung kung mga textbooks ko na pang senior high at uh, pang college ay uh, mga empirically based. No? Hindi yan ginawa ng whimsical because uh, the design was based on this one which you can adapt kasi ito kasi for ano eh, specific for for language but you can adapt this uh uh oh nabasa ni sir Marvin pala thank you sir Marvin for reading this uh, article um pwede niyo pong i-adapt yung ano yung nasa taas tweak niyo lang ng konti Tsaka yung sa baba, if you want to tweak it a bit, no? yung actual learning outcome. Yung taas kasi, ito yung inyong intended. ba Intended learning outcome. Tapos itong nasa ilalim, ito yung actual. Kung ano yung na-perform talaga ng bata. Tapos titingnan nyo, may gap ba? E di balik na naman kayo sa intended. But cyclical siya. No? Hindi siya linear. Tapos yung nasa outermost, dito naka-integrate lahat ng principles. Sa outermost circle, yan yung, mga, yung theories. Two theories that guided that guided the instructional materials. Tapos yung second layer, um, ito na yung mga specific principles. Tapos yung nasa loob, ito yung mga teaching processes. Okay, dito kayo pwedeng mag-adjust. Depende sa inyong kung math yan, kung science yan, kung engineering yan, kung allied health yan. So, itweak nyo na lang po itong gitna. No? But you can add also more principles if you want. So, this is actually adjustable. So, para lang po pag bago kayo gumawa ng ano, bago kayo gumawa ng instructional materials, may may backbone. Hindi yung kasi kasi yung mga hindi experience na uh, IM developers kasi pag magsusulat sila, immerse agad sa writing, no? It cannot be like that, no? Kasi mapapansin niyo yung pag walang backbone, yung unang module Iba na ang forma doon sa second. Tapos iba na rin yung sa third. 
Tapos iba ang fourth. Eh kasi nga walang backbone. No? That's why before you immerse yourselves into uh, IM development, you have to clarify first. No? Collaboratively, kayong sa isang subject area, mga grupo kayo, collaboratively come up with an IM design model that you will be uh, adopting para may science. No? May science sa inyong pagde-develop ng instructional materials. Okay. For the scope and sequence, this is very crucial because it will, will dictate the content of your instructional materials, ito po yung napakita ko sa inyo kahapon. Pero kahapon, ang pinaliwanag ko ay ano ba yung CLO, topic, TLO, assessment, methodology. Let's just have a brief rundown. <coughs> yung CLO, yan yung sa syllabus. Of course, yung topic is yung ano yung mga specific uh, things that you will be discussing. TLO, yan yung per lesson, assessment, perspective ng studyante, diba? gagawin nila, methodology, perspective ng teacher, kung ano gagawin ng teacher, resources, lahat ng kailangan. No? And then makikita nyo sa pinakailalim, culminating task or culminating activity, lahat po ng gagawin yung instructional materials. And of course, by extension, all the syllabi that you will be developing should contain a culminating task or culminating activity that will integrate all the CLOs that you have stipulated in your syllabus. Okay? Um, kasi yung iba, ito nakakaligtaan. Pagkatapos ng last, last uh, lesson, yun, tapos na. Walang nag integrate but, but the culminating task or culminating activity is very it's it's really essential no to the to the learning no of the of the students so wag niyo pong kakaligtaan yung ano ito yung parang pinaka post test sa inyong um, instructional materials okay so let me since we are to, we are now in the scope and sequence part <clears throat> ang focus natin yung alignment yun ang ipapaliwanag ko po no this afternoon. So, see, let's look first at CLOs. We have CLO 6, 7, and 8. Ano, ano ba yan? CLO 6 is convey ideas through oral, audiovisual, or web-based presentation for different target audience in local and global setting. CLO 7, create clear, coherent, and effective message. CL, CLO 8, present ideas persuasively. <coughs> And then CLO 12, adopt awareness of audience and context in presenting ideas. Balik tayo. Oops. Oh my God. Wrong. Balik po tayo sa scope and sequence. Nakita nyo po yung color coding. Yung blue, CLO 6. Ang tinatarget niya yung blue din dun sa assessment part. Okay, so makikita nyo po yung alignment, no? Remember, outcomes-based pedagogy, that's constructive alignment. Lahat ng mga CLOs nyo or learning outcomes dapat may kamatch na, may kamatch na uh, assessment activity. CLO 7, balikan natin. Create clear, coherent, effective message. O di yung speech drafting, magsusulat sila to address that one. CLO 8, Present ideas persuasively. O anong gagawin ng studyante? They will deliver about, uh, they will deliver speech about a social issue. So, may alignment na naman. CLO 12. Ito is understanding audience. So, adopt awareness of audience. O di papagawin ko sila ngayon ng audience analysis. So, yun, ang, yun po, when you, when you develop your syllabus, which has an impact on the instructional materials that you will develop, siguraduhin yung mga in-indicate naman natin na CLOs dun sa corresponding topic ay reflected sa lahat ng assessment activities. Otherwise, ano po ang nababiolate nating principle sa assessment? Ano po kaya yun? What do you think? Kung hindi nag-match yung dalawa, you may you may respond also dito sa ano po natin, sa message. Ano po yung nabaviolate na principle if there is no uh, if if the CLOs uh, do not match with the assessment activities. Hmm. 
the principle of <coughs> it's the principle of validity. Di po ba? Hindi na target yung dapat targetin. So, uh, kung, kung gusto nyo pong mag-color coding, when you prepare your syllabus and the scope and sequence for your instructional materials, mas maganda. Because when you do color coding, makikita nyo agad kung, kung na-observe na nyo yung principle of constructive uh, ay, may mga na ano pala na-disconnect. Uh, kung na-observe nyo yung constructive alignment. So, you do some color coding also. No? Para ano po, para ma-ensure natin yung validity of your assessment activities. Now, let's look. Hindi lang po doon. Remember, you also have TLOs, the topic learning outcomes, and that's at the topic level. So you have to make it sure also that um, all your TLOs have their corresponding assessment activities. So halimbawa, apply effective methods of persuasion. E di syempre, pasok naman yan sa, ano, sa speech delivery. At saka doon sa, hindi ko na po na color code kasi maglalaban-laban yung color coding. Eh. Um, sa speech delivery at saka doon sa speech drafting. Use appropriate organizational pattern for a persuasive speech. O pwede rin yan sa, sa speech uh, drafting. Evaluate a persuasive speech. Ay di pa pasok yan dun sa speech analysis. Ito po, nandiyan, speech analysis. No? Deliver an effective persuasive speech on civic literacy. O di yun yung uh, main task. And then reflect on learning experiences. Ayun naman po, self-viewing. I-view nila yung sarili nilang performance. And then um, they will reflect on it. Ang tawag po dyan ay on-task self-assessment. Po, on task self assessment at mas effective po yun yung uh, kaysa yung nasa realm of imagination magre reflect sila tapos ire recall lang nila yung yung kanilang uh, performance no mas maganda po anjan nakikita nila yung sarili nilang output at kung may grade na okay lang din naman kung hindi pa nag-grade dan okay din lang naman uh, so meron silang output diyan and then they reflect on that one yung kita nila yung kanilang uh, performance that's that's much much more effective than yung nasa realm of imagination lang na uh, reflection okay so ganun po that's how you will be um, um, ensuring the constructive alignment when you prepare your uh, scope and sequence sequence ito po ay isang topic lang no so ire-replicate nyo lang yung ganyang system sa ibang topics and then you will complete na yung buong scope and sequence for your instructional materials <coughs> okay so let me show you para lang you can visualize no i have uh, prepared this myself no this this um chart. So you have the CLO, assuming you have one CLO lang. And then you have the topic. <coughs> and each topic have several learning outcomes. Topic learning outcomes. So one, two, three, four. Sa isang learning outcome, mas maganda po, meron kayong isang subtopic. No? At dun sa subtopic na yun, meron kayong discussion. Yun ang pinaka-input. At pagkatapos ng, ng subtopic, pumunta agad kayo sa enabling activities or enabling tasks no related dun sa topic okay kasi yung kalimitan ginagawa ng iba sa when they prepare instructional materials eto yung topic tapos halimbawa meron siyang tatlong subtopics ang gagawin niya i-discuss muna niyang lahat yung subtopics at topic 1 to dire-diretso dire-diretso kung paano siyang nagtuturo ganun din yung pagsusulat niya ng instructional material, dere-derecho, walang patid. Noon nga nag-observe uh, ako ng class, hala, one, one and a half hours ang klase. One hour and 15 minutes siyang nag-discuss. Tapos yung activities, 10 minutes lang. Biruin nyo naman yun. No? Kung kagano kahirap din yun sa perspective nung ano. Kung ang ibang teacher nag enjoy sa ganong mode, yung mga bata talagang ano, pagod na pagod, information overload. no So, Gamitan nyo po ng strategy na chunking. No? May tinatawag yung uh, chunking. Eh. So, kada subtopic, mag-exercise activities muna kayo, enabling activities. Tapos kung na-master na nila, 
yung mga mga uh, matataas na yung score na mga students doon saka kayo lumipat doon sa subtopic 2. Tapos yung sa subtopic 2 pagkatapos uh, may discussion um, activities uli tapos subtopic 3 discussion tapos activities uli. Ah uh, ganun din yung pag sequence nyo doon sa instructional materials. Um, kasi lalo na kung ano yan, kung self-directed learning, hindi pwedeng dire-diretso tapos isang bagsaka na ano, ang napakahirap po nun. So you, you do chunking. No? You intersperse the topics or the discussion with enabling activities. And I told you last time na lahat ng since itong enabling activities are related to the subtopics therefore itong enabling activities would prepare the students uh, for the per, uh, for the uh, performance of the main task no so doon sa lahat ng mga enabling activities ninyo walang tapon diyan dahil lahat yan ang assumption natin will help or, or will prepare the students in performing the main task. Okay? So, balik po tayo just for you to to uh, for just for me to concretize what I was uh, discussing a while back, no? Ito pong mga enabling activities na mini debate, quiz, audience analysis, speech drafting, small group speech, speech analysis, self-viewing with reflection, wala pong tapon dyan. Lahat yan ay magagamit ng studyante para mas maganda yung kanyang uh, pag-perform or pag-deliver ng uh, persuasive speech on a particular uh, social issue. So, yun po yung function ng uh, enabling activities. Yung enabling activities naman, pwede naman yung may pa-short quiz kayo para lang just to make sure that uh, the students understood the concepts. Pero, pag nagpa- um, comprehension check kayo or pag nagpa-quiz kayo doon sa instructional materials, huwag naman yung ginagawa ng iba na definition pero ang sagot, kitang-kita mo rin agad doon sa ano, sa instructional materials. Kailangan yung pagkaka-craft, no, to develop the critical thinking skills of students, no. Yung pagkaka-craft ng comprehension check ng mga items doon ay talagang students will really read between the lines, no? Kaya ako pag gumawa ako ng comprehension check, ano yan true or false or situational. Um, kasi kapag yan ay identification, kayang-kaya ng studyanteng kuhanin yung sagot agad doon sa, uh, sa, sa material itself. No? Kaya nga minsan ako pag gumagawa ako ng, ng um, answer key doon sa mga books na ginawa ko, ako mismo nalilito eh. Ano nga bang sagot dito sa item na to? So I needed pa to, I needed pa to, to review yung mga nilagay ko dun sa discussion para lang mas sure na yun nga yung tamang sagot and that's 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 how we have to craft the the comprehension check kasi talagang it should challenge no it should challenge the critical thinking skills of our uh, students and then after the comprehension check kung okay naman na naintindihan nila yung concept then you go na dun sa mga ano yung mga hands-on na practice, yung mga performances that will help them apply na, application na. No? Kaya makikita nyo yung gradation dyan eh. Uh, wala masyadong, actually wala masyado ako sa mga textbook ko, wala masyado remembering. Ano yan? Nasa understanding yan, sa comprehension check. Tapos may board, borderline pa sa application. No? Tapos yung mga enabling tasks sa, uh, sa kada subtopic, yun yan yung mga, mga application. Tapos yung main task, yan na yung higher level talaga. Mga synthesis, creating. No? Yung analysis, minsan nandun din inilalagay ko yan sa ano, enabling activities and enabling uh, tasks. So, so may science din, din po doon para may, ano, may pataas na difficulty level, pagtaas ng difficulty level. Okay. So this is the map naman on how you will match in culminating di ba yung uh, sa syllabus um, di ba kada main task may enabling activity no pero yung lahat ng mga 
main task, let's say main task one, you have three main tasks in your syllabus or in your instructional materials. Dapat lahat itong three main tasks na to is geared toward the performance of the culminating task. No? Yun naman yung alignment on a bigger picture. Okay? So dun sa mga main task, walang tapon din because all of them will be used when students perform the culminating task. Sa bandang huli ko na po ilalagay yung ano no yung sample uh, outline. Let's go now to the um I'm looking at So, um let's go now to uh topic ito specific parts na of your books uh, of your instructional material per lesson. For the topic learning outcomes here are the things that you have to consider, which I, I've mentioned in some um, yesterday. First is there should be a performance, yung action verb, at saka yung object of the verb. Remember our quiz B uh, on uh, OBE, so in writing learning outcome. Um, of course, it has to be, <coughs> it has to be a uh, concise and uh, clear, which I also gave uh, yesterday. Uh, and then yung smart, di ba? Uh, kamisado naman natin, it has to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time-bound. And then, please, ito po kalimitan na ano eh, yung nagkakamali yung iba. They use two verbs in one, they use two verbs in one uh, learning outcome. One at a time po. No, one at a time. Isang verb. Halimbawa, yung iba sasabihin, describe and uh, ano ba? describe and classify, blah, 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 blah. O pinagdalawa mo na. May describe ka na. Meron ka pang classify. Diba? So, isa-isa lang. No? One at a time. Kung yung isa naman ay makocover na niya yung isa, piliin mo na lang yung, ano, yung isang uh, action verb. And then uh, arrange uh, arrange the learning outcomes um, logically. No, pwede yang from the easiest going to the highest level, dun sa levels of learning. Pwede rin naman yang kung paano nyo inarrange yung mga subtopics, dun yun rin ia arrange yung inyong uh, learning outcome, uh, learning outcomes. But what's important here is you have to have. Uh, you have to use a certain principle in uh, arranging your learning outcomes. And then incorporate the mastery of content. Ay, wag namang mawawala yun. No? Yung kung ano yung, yung understanding nila doon sa mga uh, topics. So please include yung mastery of content. Also include yung 21st century skills. Tapos, you emphasize higher order thinking skills. As much as possible, 70 to 80% of your learning outcomes per lesson, no, per lesson or per module should be higher order thinking skills. Um, kasi college students na itong mga studyante natin. So, you have to focus on more advanced uh, uh, thinking skills. Wala na masyado yung identification, no? Unless talagang kailangan kailangan ilagay natin yung identify. Pero kung hindi naman, makocover na siya ng iba, na higher level uh, higher level learning, eh, de, yun, doon na lang kayo mag-stick sa higher level learning. Emphasize the application of target skills in real life context, no? Specifically for the professional courses. Yan, ako. So, uh, sa learning outcomes po, kailangan lagay natin doon yung ano, kung ano yung nangyayari sa industry in relation to that particular topic so that the students would see the relevance no, of all your uh, activities. <clears throat> and then let the students reflect. No? So isama nyo na rin, one of the, para hindi nyo na talaga nakakaligtaan doon sa inyong module, isama nyo na as one of the learning outcomes, yung reflection part of the students on their learnings. Just to make sure that uh, there will be self-assessment and there will be self -ref uh, there will be reflection at the end of the lesson. So if you will notice, may ref 
reflection na sa start, yung self-assessment, may reflection pa ulit at the end. Okay. So, here are some of the here are some of the uh, topic learning outcomes. If you will notice, one out of five, yun ang low uh, lower uh, order thinking skills. No? Yung simula analyze, yung write, deliver, reflect, higher level uh, thinking skills. So in this particular case, 80% ay nasa HOTS and 20% lang yung nasa lower level. And if you will look at the, at the structure of the learning outcomes, simpleng simple. Isang tingin na intindihan agad. Hindi kailangan sobrang complex yung inyong sentence. No? When you come up with uh, learning outcomes, the simpler it is, the better. Now, what will you use as an introductory statement? Itong ginamit ko dito at the end of the lesson, students will be able. May isa pa yung by the end of the lesson, the students should have been able. So magbabago rin yung, ano, yung, yung uh, verb tense. So basta importante you, you, uh, you put the, the uh, introductory statement there. Tapos, as much as possible, if we will follow the principle of OBE, will ang gagamitin. Na po? Will. Students will uh, be able. Okay? Uh, pwedeng we can do away na lang yung mga to identify, to analyze, to write pa ulit-ulit ang to. So, i-drop na natin, lagay na natin yun dun sa, ano, sa introductory uh, statement. Okay? So, let's try to check now this one. Try to read the following learning outcomes and identify whether each of the following is appropriate or not. Pwede nyo pong i-message na lang sa, dito sa, ano, sa Zoom. The first one, students will be able to write, yun po, is it A, appropriate, or N? Correct. Yan, daming sagot. So the answer is N. Why N? Bakit N? What's, what's the problem with item one? Pwede rin po kayo mag-interact, ha? Not specific, correct. Ano pa po? May kulang, di ba? What's missing? The object of the verb. Very good, Sir Harry. Skaling. No? Mamlalain. So, what's missing here is there's no, uh, there's no object of the verb. Right, what? Kaya sabi sa inyo, essential talaga yung object of the verb. Eh. Two, students will be able to apply one of the many theories of social psychology so that these theories can be applied in various real-life scenarios that people experience. <clears throat> ano po yung two? <coughs> A or N? May sumagot ng A, may sumagot ng N, Medyo nag 50-50, medyo lumalamang ang N. The answer here is, oh, yun, may explanation si Sir Ryan. Ang galing. It's too wordy. Lengthy, sabi ni Sir Harris. So that's correct, no? Although content-wise, okay siya. Um, this is too wordy. You can simplify it more. Pa paano ba natin masisimplify yan? Students will apply a theory of social psychology in real life context. Oh, you can. Di mas maigsi ngayon. Mas maigsi yung uh, uh, inyong learning outcome. So, wag masyadong mahaba kasi ito, malilimutan mo na yung ano. Ayun. Thank you, Sir Marvin. Verbosity results to vagueness. Very good. Um, Malilimutan mo na yung first idea. That's the effect of that one. Pag bago mo matapos yung last item. So be very direct to the point and be brief with your statement. Three, students will be able to know federalism. A or N? Okay. Yan, marami. Hal ay, lahat. Lahat po ay N. Bakit po N? Why, why N? Tama, not measurable. 
it's not measurable pero may nakikita pa po akong ganyan na you know even in the popular yung mga textbooks published by some other big publishers they still use the verb no paano mo naman mamemeasure yung no sige nga and for in the first place what ano yun what's the very concept of the word no it's very very hard to understand no so you have to siguro students should be able to explain the concept of federalism o di yan papasulatin mo sila pa explaining mo what federalism is you give an example distinguish it from other type forms of government yun mas malinaw yun di ba so three is n four students will be able to discuss and apply financial literacy yan perfect tama ang mga sagot lahat so this is definitely n o kasi two verbs nga naman pero I'm sure nakakapansin din kayo ng ganyan no po. Sa mga textbook sa mga mga sa anak nyo, pamangkin nyo, pamag-anak nyo, nakita nyo o kaya sa mga sample na pag nag observe kayo, nakakita kayo ng lesson plan, marami pa rin pong ganyan. No? So, uh, tapos magkaiba pa, tama yun Sir Marvin, magkaiba pa yung discuss at saka apply. No? So, you just choose na lang. You choose one. Siguro, I would choose apply no? financial literacy. Tapos dun sa exercise na lang, I will ask them to present and explain yung kanilang performance para may tama si discuss. Okay. Five, students will be able to practice their performance. <coughs> The answer is, yan, maraming N. Bakit po N? Why N? Tama po, it's N. Why is it N? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. But. Okay. There. But. So the the explanation for this one is, yung the. Yung hindi accurate or appropriate word na ginamit dito ay yung the word practice. Oh, practice. Bakit mo naman ilalagay yung practice? Eh, hindi naman yun outcome. Practice is a means. Di po ba? Students will be able to practice their performance. That's a means to an end. So, you have to be, we have to be very, very careful with the, uh, with the, uh, verb that we are using in the in the learning outcome kailangan yan ay talagang uh, outcome no uh, as in outcome like apply financial literacy yun pero yung practice talagang it's just a means eh di sabihin mo na lang na that students will be able to perform what perform uh, a drama play halimbawa ganon So students will be able to perform. Eh, ganun na lang. Huwag na yung practice kasi practice is a means to an end. Yung parang may pagka, may pagka means to an end lang na pwede mo namang ilagay dito. Eh, yung ano, halimbawa, is to, uh, to develop. Pero ito, outcome pa rin eh. To develop learning strategies, halimbawa. Or to develop study strategies. But ang phrasing pa rin yan. Outcome pa rin yun eh. No? Unlike this one, talagang the phrasing of the out of, of the LO is uh, more of ano the focus is on the means okay so hindi po ang pag pag phrase po ng learning outcomes outcomes not po the focus is on means okay just like item 5 okay <clears throat> next let's go now to pre activity so that we have enough time for our Q&A later Um, remember, ang palagi lang po nating naiisip at lalo na sa mga novice teachers when they when they ask their students to do some pre-activities bago mag-immerse sa actual lesson ay to make it enjoyable or engaging for learners. But that's just one. One of the five features of uh, of um, uh, pre-activity. So to engage learners, 
uh, to engage them dapat hindi masyadong mahirap no wag niyo namang free activity pa lang sobrang hirap na pina, nagdugo na ang ilong ng estudyante sa ano sa pagiging complicated nung activity so make it easy yung easy lang easy yung pagkaka pagkaka craft ng uh, activity and then um, it has to activate activate schema or the background knowledge of students. So, dapat nare-relate yung activity sa kung ano yung na-experience ng studyante. Relatable. No? Hindi yung very technical agad. So, relate it first. Kasi, ang brain po natin, pag para yung chain eh. Halimbawa, pag hindi mo inactivate muna yung schema, yung ipapasok mong bago, lutang, nakalutang siya. It's floating. No, if you can if you can visualize or if you can see me, parang ito yung kanyang, uh, ito yung old knowledge, ito yung bago, hindi mo inactivate ang schema, nandyan. So pag ganyan na nangyari, ang bilis din itong mawawala. No, makakalimutan agad ng studyante. That's the schema theory sa learning. No po? Pero pag itong new knowledge ay nirelate mo dun sa naka-establish na knowledge na ng studyante para pong ganito if you can see me from the camera no hindi madaling malaglag yung bagong knowledge ng studyante kaya kailangan talaga irerelate mo yan sa experience and the current knowledge of students at gawin na agad yan dun sa pre-activity pa lang third it has to diagnose students weakness Uh, ito malimit na nakakaligtaan no sa pre-activity or warm-up activity kasi masyadong engrossed sa pagiging engage at saka sa play part of the lesson. Um, kailangan yung inyong ika-craft na pre-activity ay in relation to item 4, nakalink siya dun sa inyong topic learning outcomes. At since nakalink siya doon, pag nag-perform sila ng pre-activity na related doon, makikita nyo, ah, malakas ba, magaling ba ang pagkaka-perform ng student dito sa TLO1 o sa TLO2 o sa TLO3. So makikita nyo kung saan mahina yung estudyante. No? So kaya, kaya one of the purposes of pre-activity is to diagnose also the uh, weaknesses of our students. And yung na-mention ko nga kanina, please don't make it too difficult. Uh, kung baga yan ay ang easier version of the main task. Di ba may main task po tayo? Itong main task at itong pre-activity parang parallel yan. No? Kasi, kasi same prin principles ang ginagamit eh. Parallel siya. The only difference between the two, this one is much easier than the main task. Kasi ito napaghandaan na nila eh. Ito wala pa. Okay? So there. Tapos yung pre-activity... Uh, wag na masyadong rinegrade na yan. Pre-activity lang na. Pag nakompleto nila, di perfect 10 agad. Ganun po. Tapos ayun, motivated pa sila. No? Uh, so, so these are the things that you have to observe when you uh, prepare a pre-activity. Let me show you an example. Ito halimbawa, nasa marketing, business, mar business and marketing na uh, subject. Um, business, uh, marketing students pero persuasive speech. No? On, on your left, you will see the, the uh, learning outcomes. Identify the features of effective persuasive speech. Ito po yung kanina. Analyze the structure, write a clear and coherent persuasive speech, deliver a persuasive speech, tapos mag-reflect. Punta tayo dun sa pre-activity ko. Sabi ko, get one item from your bag. Di ba dali-dali? Pag di pa naman nila nagawa yun. And then group yourselves into three members each. Prepare a speech that can convince your groupmates to buy your item. O pag hindi naman nila nagawa yan, ewan ko na lang. E, item nila, baka kunin nila, phone, tapos bebenta nila, di ba? Deliver the speech to your groupmates. And then after all members have presented, write a brief paragraph explaining the following items. What are the good features of the speech? Organization of ideas. Ito yung kanilang deliver. And then possible points for improvement. If you will see, 100% match yan. Itong nasa right at saka itong nasa left. No? So that's how you may have a different way of doing it. Basta the principle is yung pong lima na uh, principles in crafting your pre-activity. Next, self-assessment. Okay, self-assessment. I've explained that to you that it allows the students to identify their own weaknesses no? after the pre-activity. Kasi si self-assessment, 
ang basis niyan yung pre-activity, yung performance nila sa sa pre-activity and uh, perhaps all other previous performances related to that one. So pag sumagot sila ngayon, gagamit sila. You can use rubric, pwede rin namang walang rubric, no? But in my case, every time I prepare instructional or textbooks or uh, work text, I use uh, this one, no? Meron akong ganito para hindi na masyadong mag-isip yung uh, estudyante. Tapos it would be easier for the teacher also. Halimbawa, uh, nag-online class kayo, uh, synchronous online, si teacher nagli-lecture, andun din yung mga estudyante niya. It will also help you kung saan ka magfo-focus sa yung instructional delivery. No? Kasi yung mga estudyante dyan sa kada item, they will tick the corresponding uh, uh, item. Halimbawa, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Ngayon. So after they answer this one, Tatanungin mo ngayon yung iyong estudyante. Oh, who among you answered uh, three sa item one? Or then two, one. Tapos dun yung makikita po, pag tinanong nyo lahat yan, you will know kung saan kayo magfo-focus. Pag marami ang nakakakuha ng mga three dun sa item two, magfo-focus ka pa ba naman dun masyado? Siyempre hindi na masyado. No? Pero pag halimbawa ang certain items like appropriate pronunciation, ang dami, halos lahat sumagot, one. Diba? Ibig sabihin yan, you have to focus on that particular item. So, ang inyong uh, instructional delivery is very targeted also. Hindi, ito yung contextualization din eh, the principle of contextualization. No? Yung, kaya minsan, if you would experience, bakit ganun? Effective ang strategy ko sa unang section. Tapos pagpunta ko sa pangalawang section, hindi na naging effective. Eh kasi you are following the principle of one size fits all. Eh hindi ganon. No, that's not that's not the reality when it comes to learning. And this one, this kind of uh, pre-assessment will help you, no? Focus your instructional delivery for the students to be more engaged. Kasi pag alam ko na bat pa ako magiging masyadong engaged dun. Tapos Dire-diretso pa ang discussion mo doon. Masyado kang nag-devote doon sa topic na yun, no So these are some of the factors. Kaya may ganong differences sa reception ng mga estudyante. Pero iisa rin lang naman. No? Iisa rin lang naman yung approach at saka method na ginamit natin sa instructional delivery. Um, for the input, um, number one, yung pinakita ko nga sa inyo kanina, you can divide it into subtopics, di ba? Subtopic one, subtopic two, subtopic three. Tapos you also, so it, it will be aligned definitely uh, with your uh, topic learning outcomes. And then um, provide then um, authentic text kasi these are college students. Yung mga modified text kasi ay ginagamit kalimitan lang sa lower levels like grade elementary uh, elementary level no pag yan ay mga high school na lalo na pag college you have to really use authentic text as your sample uh, materials and they should be within the realities of your students no so as much as possible nga you you provide a variety of of text so that yun lang ang challenge pag nagawa po kayo ng instructional material Paano niyo mapipili yung mga ano niyo? Kung paano niyo mapipili yung tamang uh, instruction, ang tamang text? Uh, one thing that can help you is you should have an inventory of the uh, preferences and interests of your uh, students. Eh, siguro naman hindi naman masyado yung magbabago uh, for let's say several years no? pag nakakuha kayo ng ganun. And it will give you some ideas on which texts will be uh, used in your uh, instructional uh, materials. And then use a variety of forms of media, lalo na if it's a, in, an e-learning material. So, mag-integrate po tayo ng multimedia dyan. Kung may mga hyperlink pa, eh, ilagay din. Kaya lang, it requires a lot of technical skills. So, that's why you have to have people who can assist you on uh, this part. And then try to incorporate 21st century themes, yung five themes. No? How can you do that? Um, pwede namang bawat module may focused theme. Pwede rin naman na bawat module yung limang themes nando na. 
So it depends on your it depends on your preference. And then you try to give a lot of examples. Doon yung minsan yung iba medyo kinukulang, no? So you have to give concrete, specific and detailed examples for each of the concepts that you are uh, sharing to your students. Uh, ito po example ng ano sample uh, input for persuasive speech eh uh, ang persuasive speech kasi sa ano yan eh yung purposive communication ko so kung meron po sa inyo nagtuturo ng uh, purposive communication which is AGE subject so i've listed here all the <coughs> subtopics tapos andito naman yung mode of presentation remember ito rin po yung inyong nasa ano nasa syllabus These are your sources of input. You can use books. Dami naman tayo sa library. Kaya lang, typically sa library, pag hindi masyadong, ano eh, hindi na masyadong nagagamit actually kasi uh, minsan masyado ng, ano, obsolete. Um, when we say recent, these are books published within the last three or five years. So as much as possible, yung mga books po na gagamitin as your references, ay mga recent and uh, mga recent references unless your topic is something that's yung yung historical value niya is uh, very important yun pwede naman kayong gumamit ng mga ano, mga classic uh, references at yun nga if it's a classic reference na talagang hanggang ngayon ginagamit pa rin no at sinasite pa rin na mga experts, pwede nyo rin namang gamitin. But generally, you try to use and complement it with uh, recent references. Try to use audiovisual materials also, lalo na sa e-learnings, periodicals like newspapers and magazines. No, Our students love reading those uh, texts as long as they are interesting for them, not interesting for the teacher. Okay po. Uh, primary data. <clears throat> In primary data, ito yung mga research. Uh, para din aware ang bata sa mga updates na nangyayari. So, you can also ask them to read some research related to the related to the topic. Although it might be challenging for them because uh, research are written for uh, for professionals and for experts. No? So, baka mag-struggle lang sila ng konti doon sa pag-uncomprehend doon sa information. Tapos iwasan po natin yung cited as cited in, yung nagse-secondary source pa. Iwasan po natin. Instead of doing that, then you go, go to the uh, go to the primary source, no? Wag na yung mag-as cited in ganyan. Kasi ang mga gumagamit lang ng as cited in unless it's an exigency, mga ano, um, hindi lang talaga nag-effort sa sa pagkuha ng mga references, no? Kaya pag ako, pag nagre-review ako sa journals, pag may nakita agad ako na cited in, pero bihirang-bihirang mangyari ito kasi mga top journals yun eh. Pero pag may nakita man ako na ganun, ay nare-reject agad yun. Kasi it only reflects the, ano, the effort that the, uh, although it's just one, no? Uh, effort of the writer. And then schema in personal or professional experience. No, yung experience mo as a teacher, experience mo na nakikita sa mga student, experience mo sa community. That's a very rich resource of information. You can even give that as an example. <laughs> And then, of course, yung online sources na nabanggit ko na kanina, <coughs> how to detect or identify reliable from not so reliable sources. Assessment activities, I think I talked about already yung the difference among uh, enabling activities, main task, and then reinforcement activities po. Ito po yung, ano, ah, yung homework. But in the context of flexible learning and remote learning, wala nang reinforcement. Halos puro na nga. Ano. It blurs. No? It blurs or pinalabo niya yung boundary between main task and reinforcement activities. But uh, technically speaking, yung reinforcement activity is an is a post activity after they have completed their main activity. Yon. So yung pang-add-on na lang, kumbaga, or kahit naman remote at pang-add-on siya, 
matatag na pa rin natin siya na uh, reinforcement activity. So enabling activities, um, I've mentioned a while back, it has to reflect the learning outcomes and the topics and it should provide scaffolding in the performance of the main task. So you can use either comprehension check or controlled or free activities. Ito yung mga tasks. <clears throat> For the main task, ito pong concept ng, if you can at least, no, I've read an uh, the report of OECD published in 2019 at talagang they, they ano, in relation to education, um, they promote the the application or the use of project-based and problem-based learning. No? So please try to integrate yung project-based, yung problem-based is they will try to solve a particular problem in their, in their surrounding, in their community. You know, that, that's a very concept of problem-based. And syempre, attach doon yung project-based. Yung solution mo is, 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 is a project. No? Is it a, an output that, that is also used outside or in the industry or in, in real life context. So magkadikit talaga si problem based and project based. So make it as much as possible interactive, may interaction kaya pa rin namang i-group no ang mga estudyante. Interactive and collaborative, of course authentic related sa kanilang programs or uh, specialization. Um, remember the grasps, no? So should be contextualized. And community-based. No? Uh, community-based. So, titingin sila kung ano nangyayari sa paligid nila and then they come up with an activity out of that. One, so that they would see the relevance of their uh, main task. And please integrate technology. No? Please integrate that one. Don't forget to do it. So, um, I think I've, I've shown this one din naman to you kanina. No? That all of the enabling tasks on the left column are scaffolding the uh, delivery of students of their uh, individual persuasive speeches using AV materials. Okay. And then reinforcement task, it's just like main task. Yun nga, um, the only difference is that it's an add-on activity just to have a closing and stamp, no? stamp the learning. Hindi yung very, very abrupt yung pagkakatapos ng lesson. Kasi may sandwich effect dapat yan. Alam nyo yung normal yung sa statistics na normal distribution dapat ganun din no so nagsimula ka ng sa low level di masyadong mahirap tapos pupunta ka ngayon sa main task tapos bababa ka na naman dun sa performance task hindi masyadong mahirap uh, tapos bababa ka dun sa reflection na napakadali rin namang gawin so it's like the normal normal distribution na ano na na, na hitsura ng uh, activities na gagawin ng estudyante. And actually, that's the same principle that we have to do when we craft our yung mga multiple choice um, tests. Magsisimula sa madali, pahirap ng pahirap, tapos bababa na naman, punta ka na naman dun sa hindi masyadong mahirap na mga items para naman hindi ma-frustrate yung uh, Estudyante, no? So that's the science behind that uh, normal curve. Okay, so these are, uh, this is a table representing the mapping of your TLOs, the subtopics, the enabling task, the main task, and reinforcement tasks. So um, actually, this is the same, this is the same information that I have shown to you dun sa scope and sequence. Medyo inalign ko lang yung enabling task, yung main task at reinforcement task para makita nyo yung, ano, yung uh, mapping niya. But essentially, it's the same with the so scope and sequence. Kaya yung scope and sequence is the heart, no? The heart of your, the heart of, of, of um, executing your course materials. Okay? And then, of course, the last two parts are the rubric Yun po ha, never ever forget to have a rubric for all the performance tasks. Sa lahat ng tasks, whether it's enabling task or main task, 
or reinforcement task, kailangan meron kayong corresponding rubric. There are so many available rubrics sa internet. You just copy them. You just cite them na lang. Or you can come up with your own. No? Pwedeng itweak nyo yun a bit and then you come up with your own uh, rubric. As much as possible, you use analytic versus holistic. Yung holistic po, yung may criteria. Halimbawa, um, content, 25%. Format, 15%. Accuracy, 15%. Yun po ay holistic. Hindi po masyadong maganda yun from a formative perspective. Yung analytic naman, um, I, I think ayun, meron pala akong sample dito. Ito po yung analytic rubric. No? Meron pang isang version yan. Sa bawat box may description. May ganun pa. Uh, mas mahirap yung gawin. Pero yung ganito, pwede na. No? Pwede na yung ganitong type na analytic rubric. Kasi when, when you assess the performance of students, makikita mo agad kung saan siya malakas, saan siya mahina. And the students also would see that one so that in their uh, succeeding performances, they will be able to adjust it. No? And they would be able to focus on their weaknesses. That's the beauty of using an analytic rubric. So I suggest when you, uh, when you come up with your rubric, try to make it very comprehensive, as detailed as possible, and you should be able to capture all the different aspects of that uh, specific performance so that um, you'd be able to see the specific strengths and weaknesses of the students, not only you, but also the students themselves. Okay? And make, of course, all the indicators very clear. Yung isang basa at a glance again should be understandable or should be understood by the, by the uh, students. <clears throat> For the reflection, uh, there are several ways on how you can do it. Pwede yung KWL, diba? what you know, what you want, uh, what you know, what you want to know, and then what you've learned. Pwede rin naman na uh, parang reflective journal, pwede rin naman na reflective essay, pwede rin naman na you have a guide question, we have guide questions related to your topic learning outcomes, tapos sasagutin nila yon on whether they achieve those uh, learning outcomes or not. Now, the beauty of reflection is uh, it allows students to make learning cyclical. So, mababalikan nila yung hindi masyadong, ano, hindi masyadong nilang natutunan no? during the instructional uh, delivery. So, we really have to integrate the reflection part in your uh, instructional materials. Okay? So, these are some of the reflective questions. Actually, itong mga to, ano, default na ito eh. Like, what were your misconceptions about the topic prior to taking up this lesson? What new or additional learning have you had after taking up the lesson? Have you achieved the TLOs? What factors contributed to your achievement or non-achievement of the TLOs? Template na actually ito, you know, that can be used across subjects. But you can have, you can specify it more if you want, you know? Okay, so to summarize, just right in time, um, TPAC or the technology, pedagogy, and content are the fundamental elements of an effective instructional material. So these three are the triumvirate no, of IMs. And then, of course, we have to ensure constructive alignment as shown in the scope and sequence. And remember that uh, IM development is not just an art, it's a science, because it has to be based on principles, it has to be based on uh, empirical evidence, it has to be based on those practices that are really uh, time-tested. No? Uh, also, the current principles need, you know, the 13 principles that I have shared with you, should be translated no, into specific and coherent instructional materials. And uh, part of that are the assessment activities that will determine whether we are successful in achieving the learning outcomes that we set for our students. And of course, don't forget, as crucial as the performance tests are the rubric and the 
reflection part, which makes your uh, learning nonlinear or cyclical. Okay, so uh, with that, thank you so much. Uh, we will open the floor now for um, question and answer. Let me stop this content. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Byron, for that comprehensive presentation and sharing to us practical tips and guidance, mm -hmm. building up our module for flexible learning. So let's open the floor for questions. We are accepting questions in YouTube and also on Facebook. While you were discussing, sir, there was a comment about how do we build up in terms of uh, thesis course. Can you share? How do we, Anna Surya? Build up we? for thesis, those who are handling thesis, sir. Ah, yung thesis writing. Ay, para ding ano, para ding yung mga uh, textbooks sa... Uh, uh, of course, a research writing. No, um, actually, itong ganitong diniskas ko is, is very, very appropriate for thesis. Kasi kaya din naman per topic yun eh. Like, syempre, you will start ano ba yung chapter 1, tapos chapter 2, tapos chapter 3, o magbibigay ka rin ng samples, di ba? Tapos magsusulat din yung studyante. Tapos, of course, malinaw agad, no? Very clear ang kanilang magiging final output and its thesis. So, so you, the, the things that I discussed here are very, very appropriate no, for the thesis. Thesis writing. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is not really a question, but a request from mm -hmm. SU CAS that is mm -hmm. it possible that you share one of your modules for our reference example in math? It would be helpful for us as we build up our movie. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. I promised to show you one. Ano nga pala, no? uh, one. Uh, but anyhow, I can give. Naman, I can give a copy. Uh, I medyo ititwik ko lang ng konte kasi ito yung mga na publish na bawal kasi kami magshare ng ano eh kung ano yung na publish yun ang share for copyright thing. So I need to tweak it a bit. Tapos I'll share with you some ano. A sample lesson so that you can concretize, no? You can concretize the, yung mga pinagsasabi ko dito. <laughs> so there's question coming from the Zoom chat. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between unit assessment and post-test sa part of ng IMs? Okay. Unit assessment is, for, for example, you have four units in, four units in your instructional materials. Yung unit assessment, kung ano lang yung cover ng unit 1, yun lang yung i-integrate mo and i-assess. Ganun din sa 2, yun lang exclusive sa unit 2 topics. Ganun din sa 3. But yung post-test uh, assessment, ito na yung kinombine mo lahat from unit 1 to unit 4. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm taking question from <coughs> Facebook Live. Question mm -hmm. from UAP. Mm -hmm. On parts of the IM, in particular references for language, arts, and humanities, certain authorities in the field emphasize modern language association style should be used. But mm -hmm. other experts in the field impose APA. Uh -huh. What's your suggestion on this, sir? So between MLA and APA. Actually, at Actually, it doesn't matter talaga whether it's MLA or APA. Ano lang yan? Style? Um, you know, even the top journals in uh, language and linguistics, minsan APA, minsan Harvard pa, minsan Chicago pa, nag -iba -iba. But it doesn't matter, no? Kung ano yung napag-agrihan nyo lang na, kung anong gagamitin nyo na, na reference style, di yun yung gamitin nyo. But definitely not triple e, I triple E because I triple E is for engineering. Let's take this question from Zoom chat. PIP. You stated earlier, sir, regarding product brands must not be included in an IS. How about for lessons in public relations, especially on product logo, branding discussion? Can we not include famous product logos as samples for students? Just to clarify. As long as the way it is presented is it's factual and objective, I think it can be, it can be, a, uh, it can be accepted. 
basta wala lang ano bias no you are not promoting it nor you are destroying the image of that company pero minsan kasi may mga uh, because my undergrad is public relations no abcom major in public relations may mga case din niya na binabasa eh case based approach na pangit mga crisis no so pero yun naman kasi baka naman pag pag naman uh, uh, ang yung open access na siya yung available na in public na sa public domain na siya at known na ng public there will be no issues because it's there na already so there will be no conflicts so you have to consider then the nature of the nature of the course Thank you, sir. Uh, for those who are asking, because there's so many questions, I might not be able to grab some of those questions because the Fed is quite fast. So mm -hmm. maybe you just email the content development team for emphasis, or you can email our resource speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, was, I, I want to pick one, sir. For it. Uh, there was a question. We, 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 can take, we can take as many questions as possible. Wala pa na naman for PM. So there was a question here from uh, Romeo Corin. So there was no institution. What do you suggest so that we can follow the money, minimize assessment, and maximize impact principle, which is advisable in the context of pandemic? Ah, uh, para first time ko lang narinig yata yan. Ano yung acronym? Pabasahin ko yun. Uh, minimize, Ma minimize assess assessment, maximize uh -huh. impact principle which is advisable in the context of pandemic. Ah, okay. So, but of course, taking it from the term, ibig sabihin lang, you uh, lessen the activities, no? Yung mga assessment activities. And I think there is a point there. I think I've mentioned uh, yesterday or kanina that when you, uh, when, you, you, when you choose or when you select the topics in your, probably this is similar to that one. Uh, when you choose the topics, you just focus on the essential concepts, no? the essential topics and then the essential assessment activities. Because, you know, um, halimbawa, you have, let's say you have six topics. Dun sa six topics na yun, pwedeng two main tasks lang ang gawin mo. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na you have six topics, ay six main tasks din ang gagawin. No, because sometimes you can craft you can craft assessment activity that will cover multiple topics. No? So in that particular way, you are minimizing the assessment activities, but at the same time, not destroying the validity of it. So kaya kailangan talaga, tam tama rin naman the concept of minimizing that, but not to the detriment of assessment validity. So that's why you have to focus on the essential topics, essential tasks, and if you can integrate some of the assessment activities into one, that's better because you are decreasing the load, no, the cognitive load uh, on the students. And that would be very, very helpful to promote learning as well. Thank you, sir. Um, another question, sir. So clarification lang po daw. Uh, mm -hmm. Ang questions po ba ng test at post-test ay the same or magkaiba? Ay, mag, magkaiba. Paulit-ulit kung sinabi nga nung kahapon yata na although it's equivalent form, kailangan version A and version B pa rin. Although halos parehas yung forma niya, pero yung the content itself should be different. So, how will you be able to do that? Number one, pwede mong i-rephrase yung Halimbawa, isang sentence yung question dun sa one, dun sa version A. May sent, iibahin mo yung mga names, iibahin mo yung word, iibahin mo yung mga values, pero the same concept ang tinetest at same difficulty level. So that's one way to do it. Another one is you can resequence the items. That's this, the second level no? after rephrasing the items. Uh, kung, na, kung items 8 siya dun sa pretest, you can you can make it like item 16 doon sa post-test. So these are the two ways on how you can do, the, how you can apply equivalent forms in your assessment. Thank you, sir. Uh, um, another question, sir. Um, good afternoon. This is in connection with the pre-activity 
how can we immediately check the weakness of our student about the topic using the module? How can we check the diagnose the weaknesses yes, sir. of our students? You can diagnose it uh, given the, the, the format that I gave to you. Um, diba, they will be asked to they will be asked to do a pre-activity, let's say a pre-task, no? Pag gumawa sila noon, syempre meron silang score. May score yan, no? Pwedeng magbigay ng score si teacher. mag observe siya sa performance ng mga estudyante. At the same time, they will they will uh, do some self-assessment. So you combine the observation of the teacher and the assess self-assessment practiced employed by the students and then you will you will be able to diagnose the weaknesses of your students. Thank you sir. Um I'll be entertaining last two questions so for our Sige. audience in YouTube is uh, itching to ask a question, so this is now the time. Uh, so I'm picking up from Facebook Live. Good afternoon, sir. My question is putting graphical images in instructional materials. Does it have to be originally made, or are we allowed to utilize images from the internet? Uh, both can be used. Both can be used. But the but there are disadvantages also. No? If you will get uh, materials from the internet as is, you have to get permission from the owners, the copyright owners, especially if the instructional materials that you will be developing is commercialized, meaning even benta sa studyante. So you really need to get permission from the uh, owners of that one. And that's a very tedious, no? napakahirap gawin noon. Kaya sa mga publishers, meron silang office na talagang kumukuha ng mga uh, permission. Yung iba, ang tagal mag-reply, Yung iba, hindi pumapayag. Yung iba, nagpapabaya. Depende sa number of copies that you will be printing and that you will be distributing to your target users. So, yun ang disadvantage niya. Yung disadvantage naman ng gagawa, uh, kawawa yung layout artist. Kasi talagang magdodrawing siya ng sangkatutak. Yun. But both are okay. It just depends on the, the readiness of the institution on which one will be adopted. Thank you, sir. So this is the last question from our Zoom yes. chat. Sir, now we are trying to follow one format of module for the entire region because of the consortium. Would this mm -hmm. not be a problem to branding of each university? Mm, you will be using the same format. Uh, My take there is this. No? Uh, my take there is this. If I will be asked, huh? if I will be asked. Well, I think what's important is the different universities should be given specific guidelines on what are the essential components of the instructional materials. Basta yung lahat ng guidelines, andun malinaw. Kailangan itong lahat to ay i-observe. No? Pero the way it will be presented depende na sa... Uh, university or program. You know, actually, sa isang university, ako, I, I do not subscribe to just one specific format. No? Basta yung essential components nandun, yung mga pinag-discuss ko kanina. Basta andoon. On how you will deliver it, kailangan andun sila. Uh, kasi minsan, iba-iba ang needs ng iba-ibang programs or courses. May mga courses na heavy on laboratory. Diba? May mga ganon. May mga courses or subjects na heavy on lecture. So you have to tweak a bit your, uh, you have to tweak then a bit your, uh, your uh, instructional material. So what's important is you follow the principles of effective teaching and learning. Number two, it incorporates all essential components of instructional materials. And three, eh, di siyempre maganda dapat yung may guidelines then on how you should format no yung uh, na, na uh, applicable naman sa yung target na uh, students thank you very much sir Barrett. thank you so much thank you so much uh, i really love doing this one even if it's three hours no i feel like i'm doing a monologue pero i can feel the presence of the participants especially when they do some responses dun sa ano yung iba tumutulong pa pag minakakalimutan na kung term 
nag uh, ano pa naglalagay din doon so i appreciate uh, those help from you uh, maraming maraming salamat po so uh, i hope i was able to share with you the things little things that i know based on practice and experience maraming maraming salamat po so the challenge now is how you'll be able to come up with a a science based kumbaga science based instructional materials Yes, sir. The faculty members yeah. of the ISACs will take yeah. the challenge. Mm -hmm. If you're able to view sa, sa YouTube, many of my words, thank you. Oh, nga. Actually, yung iba nag email so I, I tried to respond naman to, to those emails uh, that were sent to me. No? So I also appreciate those people who email me and ask some questions and clarifications and some advice. No, you can also do that one. At this point, uh, we will be awarding certificate of... Wow, meron din! <laughs> ano ba yan? E-certificate? <laughs> E-certificate po, sir. Oh, guess... Wow, wow. Via online <laughs> din. No? Yeah. So we will call uh, the president of Leyte Normal University, Dr. Jude E. Duarte, and also the chair of the Content Development Committee to present... <clears throat> to our resource person for this afternoon. Good afternoon. Dr. Duarte is not around, so on his behalf, um, uh, I would like uh, to award the Certificate of Recognition to Dr. Jesse S. Barot. The certificate reads, Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institutions Flexible Learning Management System Consortium presents this certificate of recognition to Dr. Jesse S. Barot for his invaluable service as resource speaker during the training workshop on course modules production for flexible learning in higher education institutions webinar series on June 11 to 12, 2020. Given this 12th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2020, Signed, Norberto C. Olavides, PhD, President, PIT, Co-Chair, Content Development Committee, Jude A. Duarte, DPA, President, LNU, Chair, Content Development Committee, Victor C. Canieza, Jr., EDD, President, BIPSU, EVHEI's FLMSC Project Leader, George M. Colorado, PhD, Director, Chet Region 8, and Aldrin A. Darilag, PhD, Commissioner, Chet. Thank you very much, Dr. Barot. Thank you, Doc Mirna, for inviting me also. You're very instrumental to this one. Tawag ko kay Doc Mirna is Ate Mirna. Ate ko yan dong sa ano, nung nag-aaral pa kami sa PNU. Nakong bait-bait niyan. Maraming salamat din na uh, Ate Mirns. Oo, Jesse, see you soon. In yeah. Yes. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Uh, for our audience, in behalf of Dr. Jude Duarte, we have Dr. Mirna L. Makalinaw, the Vice President for Student Development and Auxiliary <laughs> Services and also the Team Lead for the LNU Content Development Committee. Thank you, ma'am, for presenting the certificate. Um, let me call on Ms. Aubrey Caniete, Content Development Team, for some announcement related to Google Classrooms or institutional collaboration. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much um, to our speaker. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing to us such an informative um, discussion on the things that we have to know in, in making the mojo. Thank you so much. Once again, good Thank afternoon. So Thank you, sir. Once again, good afternoon, everyone. I am Obregiel Cañete from Leyte Normal University, and I will be sharing to everyone the, the Google Classrooms that we have made for the discussion and for the for the interconstitutional collaboration. So these Google Classrooms were actually created to accommodate the interinstitutional collaboration feature of the content development project 
under the Eastern Visayas Higher Education Institution's Flexible Learning Management System Consortium. These classrooms will allow teachers, our participants coming from different institutions um, who belong to the same discipline to create a collaborative environment for the production of the modules. Once you open your classroom, the Google Classroom, you are free to open and to start a conversation or discussion or tackle concerns on the development of your module. So once you open your Google Classroom, you will be able to see the different um, classes. Then you're going to choose to which certain discipline you belong. You have to open that one and you will see. We have posted um, the first task, the first question that we really want you to answer. Now, how are you going to join this inter-institutional collaboration through the Google Classroom? Of course, you have to have a Gmail account. And then we will be providing the link and the code that you have to enter so that you will be directed to the specific classroom that you belong. So for the Google Classroom, we have identified different colleges. The first one is for the College of Maritime Education. You are, um, I hope you can see on your screen the, the class code that you have to enter and then the link for you to be directed to that classroom. And we also have, a, we also have a classroom for the School of Criminal Justice Education, Graduate School, College of Industrial Technology, College of Veterinary Medicine, College of Nursing, College of Forestry and Environmental Science, College of Management, Entrepreneurship and Economics, College of Engineering and Technology. We also have a classroom for College of Arts and Sciences. And then the last two classrooms we have for the College of Agriculture, Agriculture and Food Sciences and then for the College of Education. We will be sharing, uh, we will be posting the list of codes and the links of, this Google, of these Google Classrooms on our Facebook page. And then we will also share the, the links and these codes to our group chat. And we will be sending these codes and, and links as well to the focal persons. And we would like to ask your help to share these codes and links to the participants. This is once again for the inter-institutional collaboration feature of the content development team. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aubrey. And let me share my screen for some reminders. Uh, for, sorry for the certificate, uh, certificate for Jesse Barrett is, uh, because they're totally requested to show the certificate. So it will be signed later on. So these are all, Thank you very much, Sir Barrett, for the information and for this session for today. So for some reminders, on June 15, that's Monday, the session will be hosted by Summer State University. We have Dr. Marilu Obina, our resource speaker. And in the afternoon of June 15, we have the Eastern Summer State University as the host. And these are our uh, remaining webinars. So we'll have one on Monday. Tuesday and Wednesday morning, and one will be on June 19. That's on Friday in the afternoon. And for your attendance this afternoon, uh, you may take a picture. So I hope you're able to take a picture of the attendance. Uh, make sure not to request edit on it, just fill in the information. So if there are further questions, you may like and follow our page, Facebook page, AVHAI's LMC Content Development. With that, on behalf of the host team, our president, Dr. Edgardo E. Tulin, and Dr. Duarte of LNU, 
And this is Moises Niels Serinya thanking you for your presence and attendance today. In YouTube Live, we have more than 500 participants and close to 50 participants in Facebook Live and also in Zoom, uh, around 60 participants. Happy Independence Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, IT Palompon.